hello, hello, hello. What's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to you all. And Shadows Over Innistrad release day to you all. And Emrakul Day to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. What is up, BG Stilts, Looney, Thrace, Kisos, Day and Wildfire, Starfish. How is everyone doing today? Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Can we look at all the cards and Shadows Over Innistrad? Ooh, I can see if I can pull them up. We we looked through this spoiler uh, a a couple of days ago, so we we kind of have went through them all. But I can see if I can pull up the the set list for you really quickly. I mean, there's a there's a lot of cards. Uh, I don't I don't even know where they are. Uh, oh, was it in alphabetical order? Where is so shadows of the past, shadows of Innistrad. Uh This will. This will show you all the cards, but there's there's a ton. You can see them all uh, over on the website, uh, but there is, there's a huge list because it's not only all the cards from Shadows over in Innistrad, but there's also a bunch from original Innistrad, so there's a pretty huge list of cards that just dropped today. Uh, but anyway, today, 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 hey, thank you. I like this shirt too. Today is Emrakul Day. I got a bit of a cold, so if I sound stuffy or cough or whatever, uh, that's, that's why, but uh, we are going to be playing the coolest card from uh from this set wizards they posted a whole article talking about how they didn't think they were going to add emerical they thought it would be so hard to program they just weren't going to do it they ended up doing it in the long run also i should say for some reason my audio is not working uh i can i can hear all of you um but, or you can hear all of me, but I, I can't hear like the splash or anything. I don't know. Just randomly, like as the stream was starting, my audio stopped working. So if I miss a sub or something, let me know because I can't hear the splash at the moment. Spice Lord MTG. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we reanimating Emrakul? No. Emrakul actually doesn't want to be reanimated. Uh, you don't get its ability. It's stealing your opponent's turn ability unless you cast it. So, I mean, you can't just reanimate it as a big flyer, which I guess is fun. Fine. But our plan is to actually cast Emrakul in various ways because the real goal of this is to steal our opponent's turn. Like, that's what we're trying to do. We would like to win two, but our real plan is to steal our... We've never had ever, ever, ever on Arena a chance to... Uh, a chance to Mindslaver people. Like, that is not an effect that has existed on Arena. So this is our chance to teach Arena Zoomers what it's like to have someone steal your turn and wreck you with your own cards. Nia Doug, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Any tribal decks today? Uh, probably not playing any tribal decks today. I think we're we're probably just stealing people's turns with Emrakul all day. We will get to tribal decks. I think, like, Spirits get some improvements. Uh, Zombies Zombies get some improvements. Those are probably the two tribal decks that get the, the biggest boost. Spirits is the one that's likely to be, like, most competitive because, um... Can we reanimate Grizzlebrand today? So I think today we're going to be playing Explorer. We we have so many, there's so many things to get to in the set. I think one of the most interesting parts of the set, and I know people want to look through it, one of the most interesting parts is uh, definitely, the, definitely the cards from... Um, from the old Innistrad, like Grizzlebrand, the only downside of the Shadows of the Past cards is they're only legal and historic. So uh, today we're going to focus on Explorer and Emrakul and Explorer, but we will get to some of the old cards. Like I love Lingering Souls. That's a really cool card. I'm sure we'll play some tokens. Maybe that could be a budget deck. Seance is on the Against the Odds poll for this week. Uh, Avacyn, probably more of a historic brawl style card. Invisible Stalker for Boggles can be pretty miserable. Snapcaster making an appearance. So there's some sweet stuff to try out in uh in historic as well but today it's emerical in explorer proof welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super for you thank you thank you thank you thank you uh, hopefully we can get him with emerical that's the plan he said i was watching an old stream heard you talking about the cat i thought you were strictly dogs did they you get a cat or how was that going for you uh <sighs> I am a dog person. The cat, the cat got me like, I couldn't do anything. I mean, I guess I could have done something about it, but the cat just literally, literally moved in. Uh, it moved in, snuck in the door, lived inside my couch for like three days and still it started pooping on the floor. And I noticed it was there. And 
I wonder if I can show, I wonder if I can show her. I wonder if I can get her. She's not like Bear. I can't, I try to call her like, hey, come here, but she she doesn't listen. Uh, can we play Emrigal? Yes, Emrigal's coming. Emrigal's on its way. We got to do our reminders first, and we got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. So replay YouTube this week, find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube, uh, tons of stuff coming out on there. Tomorrow, I know when Wander won the against odds poll, people are like, oh, is it going to be too good? Don't worry, we got a really spicy Wanderer, Wanderer tribal deck. It is, it is a really spicy take on it that I think y'all are going to like. So that's coming up for Against the Odds tomorrow. A reminder there, <clears throat> sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtgoldfish. Even the goldfish sticker, just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. They're super cool like that. Otherwise, merch page, tokens, t-shirts, playmate, good way to support the stream and the channel and the site donations always appreciated, never required. Two dollars or more gets your message right on stream. So what's on our agenda for today? We have one, two, three kind of four different emerald decks let's talk about the deck real quick i think we're going to start with the emerald devotion because it also has elish norn uh is this going to be a bully stream i hope so i hope we bully people by stealing their turn that is that is the goal so here are the emerald decks i started with hey what's up reindeer a very traditional if you played during emerald standard Kind of the monstrous Emrakul deck was a Emrakul Delirium deck. So this was trying to recreate that in Explorer, essentially, where the idea is you have a bunch of different card types. You can use Traverse Uvenwald to tutor up Emrakul. The card types reduce the cost of Emrakul, so you can cast it for like seven mana, hopefully. And then Emrakul just wins the game. There's a lot of weird one-ofs because there's tutor targets and you need all the different card types. I don't know if this build is actually any good, but this is trying to be like the standard version of Emrakul. Then I remembered... There there was another another version of standard emerald that was very scary to the point where emerald ended up getting banned and that is etherworks marvel energy emerald where basically you just make a bunch of energy and then hopefully marvel emerald into playing because marvel actually casts the card you get emerald's cast trigger you steal the turn go on and win the game so i built that version there's also a version with karn to uh to tutor a Etherworks Marvel from the sideboard. I prefer non card versions, but this version might actually be better because Karn's busted. So we got that. We also have Emrakul Devotion, which I think is the deck we're starting with because it's got Elish Norn. We get other new additions. Thalius Lancers is actually super sweet in decks like this. ETB tutors up a legend. So this tutors up our Emrakul, but it can also tutor up an Elish Norn or Archangel Avacyn. It can tutor up a Wandering Emperor, a Bruna. We can meld Bruna and Gisela in this deck. Can tutor up Book of Exalted Deeds for the Lockwood Mutavolt. So a lot of value to be had from Thalius Lancers. Plus, we just nick those and make a ton of mana and cast Emrakul and steal your turn. And then finally, wait, there is more. The last build is probably Probably the boringest build it is just play all the green ramp and trust that you hard cast emerald for like 12 mana so you just like grazer into cultivate into migrations path into cavalier and then you just cast nissa or you just cast emerald and win the game so those are the emerald decks we also have some uh some stuff to talk about today we got mark rosewaters how was the audio by the way it's so weird not being able to hear <laughs> It is so strange. Like, I can't even... Can you hear arena sounds? I can't even hear arena sounds. What happened to my audio? It's so... It's so strange not having sound. What a what a weird world. Hey, Seth, since Voldaren vampires that transform and opponents sacrifice three creatures, you could recreate your amazing deck from standard era. Ooh. I, I remember that was like a madness deck, right? Wow, boy, that standard was a... Was a minute ago. Innistrad just came out a, a couple of minutes ago. We're going to start with the, with the devotion build, I think. MS Mo, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what impact this, uh, this set has. We were looking... We were looking through it the other day. Uh, so, on one hand, in Explorer... These are cards that already exist in Pioneer. In Historic, there's some new stuff that might create new archetypes that we haven't really seen before, but it's definitely going to be interesting. I mean, it's going to be fun either way. We have tons of new stuff to try, which is, is super exciting. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if this really, really like changes the meta in any meaningful way. Yeah, no Emrakul, but we can, we can survive for a bit with this hand, which is good. I wish he had 62k gold. Oh, I know. Well, the only reason I have so much gold is I is I spend money to get gems to buy cards, and then the gold ends up adding up. <laughs> hey, what's up, Seven Year? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. So, what are you most hyped to build with? Uh, 
Are we getting thoughts used already? What are you most hyped to build from this set? What's at the top of the list? Is Hammer Time a thing now in Historic? Uh, I believe so. Thanks to the the Alchemy card. Oh, how's the job search going, uh, uh, Megacarp? Yeah, thanks to... Thanks to the alchemy card that makes hammer one to equip and also cigar to Zade, I think historic hammer time's really good. I want to play it. The only problem is, ah, uh, it's like, uh, the alchemy card is so important to the deck. Like that's kind of the, <laughs> that's kind of the concern. And we often try to avoid playing decks build around alchemy cards. It would be very awkward to not include that card because it's just like so good in the deck. So I don't know how to handle that. That's the thing we got to figure out. But ooh, new ween dates. I didn't realize new ween date. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look that up. See if I can make it to a ween show or two this summer. I've been waiting for spell color and selfless spirits. Yeah, I've already seen some people. I've already seen some people playing spirit stacks, and they look pretty good. Spellcaller is definitely a big addition. We will uh, we will look through Mark Rosewater's spoiler and speculate on that in a minute. That's the other the other well one of the many pieces of big news today. Uh, but open open the ar oh open the armor yeah yeah lack lacking a tutor is kind of annoying although the modern build doesn't really play to I mean I guess it has Urza Saga so I guess that's not exactly true Urza Saga kind of is a tutor. I know Phoenix is kind of on the decline. Do you think Thing in the Ice will do anything for an Explorer? I think the biggest issue right now is missing, missing the Delve cards. We did get Eldritch. We'll look at the set in just a minute, too. I, I pulled it up on Scryfall. We'll, we'll go over the set again since it's release day. But yes, Eldritch Evolution is in the set. Will they take the Wandering Emperor? Interesting. Interesting. We draw land. Well, let's discard the land. I think we reanimate the Charming Prince. Scry. Oh, oh, those are two very good cards. Uh, yes. We will keep... It's going to be interesting to see if uh, Archangel Avison's good, too. This card, why does Archangel Avison not see play anymore? Archangel Avison feels like a good card. I guess we grab Yariad. Hey, Seth. Am I in the minority? I don't see much value in historic, even alchemy aside. Can just do the same thing in real formats like legacy, vintage, or sometimes modern. There's unique aspects, I think, of, of historic. There's things I like about it. Like, it the fact it has stuff that doesn't exist in really any other format. The card pool is kind of unique because you have because you have stuff like the jumpstart cards, uh, random old reprints, retro artifacts, cards that aren't actually legal in Pioneer or Modern. So I think that for me is the the most exciting part of it is how you get this this kind of unique mashup. Do we just pass here? We yeah, we're probably Avacyn, right? Yeah, let's just pass. We have Avacyn. We'll hold on to Yarion for now. Our opponent knows about it, so we're probably not going to get that much value, but I don't know. Maybe they just maybe they just swing. No one's had to play against Avacyn in forever, so maybe our opponent doesn't understand how this card works. So there's things I do like about it. The downside is, that for me, the, the alchemy cards. Like, that's, that's kind of the drawback. Commander? Wait, what are Commander Collector Packs? I feel like I missed something. How was how was everyone's weekend? Anyone do anything uh, do anything sweet? I kind of think there should be fetches in historic, honestly. Just make it full on, make it full on legacy for or vintage for arena. Opponent going to pass. Well, I mean, we're gonna run out of Avison anyway. Run it out, untap, get drained. Hit you with the Avacyn. Do we have to kill Shieldred? I want to do fun things, but maybe we have to kill Shieldred. Also worth noting with Thalia's Lancers, it can find Nykthos. Uh, it can find Nykthos, which is like huge, huge in this deck. My fiance got po- Oh no. How did your fiance get poisoned, Tower Shell? Like, like spies with poisonous umbrella poisoned <laughs> that kind of that kind of like espionage or like 
Food poisoning, poison. Make Gary! I mean, it sucks either way. Make Gary for the 62nd month. I saw some people say that there's hypocrisy with complaining about MH2, uh, but also being sad about Lord of the Rings cards aren't playable. Aren't most people just happy that nothing's been broken in the format so far? I would be happy if they were only fringe playable, although I just doubt that will ever happen. Yeah, I don't think it's hip uh, hypocritical. Like, make, uh, thank you, by the way, for the resub. Like, I don't think it's hypocritical. Here's what I would say. Like, we can take the damage, right? Nykthos is pretty ex Yeah, you know, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Thalia's Lancers. Tutor. So we can Thalia's Lancers, tutor up Nykthos. And then next turn. Next turn, we can blink Thalia's Lancers, get Emrakul, maybe? Um, hey, Stone Rain! How are you? Good to see you, good to see you. Um, so I don't really think it's hypocritical because I, I'm kind of like you. Like, I don't want the broken cards. It's the it's the Ragavans and maybe the Evoke Elementals and the Renin Sixes. Those are the cards that I don't want to see. And I don't want to see those from Lord of the Rings or from a magic theme set. It doesn't matter. It's not a it's not a flavor thing or whatever, like an IP thing. Like that doesn't that doesn't make a difference at all. Um it's just that I don't want those broken cards that, like, dominate the format. On the other hand, I've said this many times before. There's, like, ten cards from Modern Horizons 2 that I think are not healthy for the format. And the rest of the set's awesome for the format. Modern Horizons 1 is basically the same way. Like, yes, there's a handful of cards that were too good and broke things and I think are a negative. But it also, like, added Soul Herder. Such an amazing card. Ephemera, I love that card. Powered up Merfolk, which is awesome. Like, it does so much good. So I don't think it's hypocritical to to be critical of the negative aspects of a set like Modern Horizons while also being excited about the positive aspects. To me, those two things are not at odds with each other, personally. All right, we get shield dridded. How do we do this? Nykthos is what? For three? That's not great. Uh, Thraven Inspector, get a clue. Up our white mana symbol. Can oh, this has no mana symbol? <laughs> Uh, well, we will make some mana, play a Yarion, blink quite literally everything, lay down arms, snipe, she ult red. Here they come, back into play. Oh, this is going to be pretty good. So, we will blink... Thalia's Lancers. Oh, we're going to get so many legends. We will tutor up a Plains. We will get a clue. We will blink. Thalia's Lancers. We will tutor up a... How's our graveyard looking? Are we are we to the Emrakul? Can we just wreck our opponent? Planeswalker Enchantment. Oh, you know what? We're, we're doing it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's what we came here to do. Emrakul one in hand. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. You haven't missed anything yet. We're about to uh, play the first, the first Emrakul. Oh, 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 I see. Commander Masters Collector Boosters. Uh, what was the question about him? I, I see the boosters now. I forgot the question, though. <laughs> we're playing Explorer today. We're playing, we're playing Pioneer. We're playing real, we're real magic. Dandy Floss, <laughs> welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, so on one hand, if you look at where's those collector boosters again? If you look at those collector boosters, on one hand, <clears throat> yes, the price is very high. On the other hand, remember Double Masters? Didn't Double Masters? So on one hand, yes, <laughs> two hundred sixty-one for four booster packs expensive that's expensive collector boosters for sure on the other hand last time we did this remember it was it was even more expensive it was the like hundred dollar hundred dollar packs with double masters so i feel like i feel like compared to that it's actually like cheaper in some ways not that it's cheap but it seems like some amount of an improvement over over last time, uh, do we have enough mana? 
six, seven. I think we do. Let's take Bruna. We're just, we're going to do everything. We're just setting up for literally everything. All right, opponent, your go. Emerkel number one coming. Spirited Companion. We will discard a Spirited Companion. We will reanimate a Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Play the land. Make a little bit of mana. And here comes... Here comes... Wow, only eight mana, too. Here comes Emrakul. Steal your turn. Thraven Inspector. Run it out. Get a clue. Hit you with Yarion. Hit you with... Yeah, I guess we hit you with both. Like, get in there. Get in there. Emrakul number one achieved. Hey, what's up, uh, Next Dark? Good to, uh, good to see you. Well, wow. Oh, boo. Boo. <laughs> Boo! We didn't even get to opponent. How often do you think that's gonna happen? Is that gonna be a common issue that opponents just scoop instead of letting us do the cool thing? <laughs> I feel like that might actually be a be a problem. No animation. That does not surprise me. Does anything get an animation anymore? Like arena is is not a. <laughs> it's so. <f> <laughs> It's so funny. Last time, when Arena first launched, my thinking was, I don't care about animations. I was like, I, like I'm like i fine without them. Like, I'm used to Moto. I don't want, like, Hearthstone had some issues with their animations. Actually, like, people timing out as animations were going. And I was afraid that that was going to happen. So I was kind of like, I don't care. Like, animations, whatever. And then they added animations. And the cool ones were super cool. Like, the, the giant hand on Realm Cloak Giant. That's one of the best ones. They were pretty sweet. And they didn't disrupt the game. So now, when something like Emrakul doesn't have an animation, I'm actually, like, a little, <laughs> a little salty about it. <laughs> I mean, if any, like, Emrakul's on that list, right? I get it. I get it. It's expensive. There's not a real direct financial payoff, I don't think, for Wizards for for uh, adding an animation. There's no... Uh, we'll go down one portable hole and... My God. Uh, probably one Elish Norn. We can use one as a tutor target. There's not really a direct payoff, but still, there's certain things that just gotta have it. Like... Emrakul would be one of them. What was the last one we were disappointed in? It was a standard sign. I'm trying to, oh, Urza. Urza. Like, we we melded Urza, and we spent so much effort into actually melding it, and we were expecting, like, something really cool to happen. Oh, this would be the greediest keep. If we get one, you know what? One land, one keep. One land, one keep. Um. <laughs> okay, paid off. <laughs> that is a Muta Vault. ADK Mark, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But seriously, like, I would be okay if it was just for super epic things. Like, I get it. It's probably expensive. You probably don't get much of reward from Wizards' perspective for the time and money you put into it. But when it comes to Emrakul, Urza, uh... I don't know if we ever get Mer like Merit Lage. I guess we have the the janky Merit Lage, but if we got Dark Depths and we're making Merit Lages, characters like that, they they deserve it. They deserve like they deserve their epic moment. So those are the ones that make me uh just a little bit sad. Hmm. Now what? I mean, Nykthos is good. Uh, do we have to kill this goblin? It's always so painful to have to do that. We still only have one white mana, which is also painful. We can just redraw. But then our opponent gets a treasure. Yeah, you know what? I think we actually do kill the... Yeah, let's get rid of the... Get rid of the Gabo. We have a new donation, McKeary. Again, I have I have no audio today, so if I miss something, please yell at me in the chat so I catch it. But I caught this one, McKeary, with a twenty dollar donation. Here's an interesting thought. We all know Simic was busted in standard for a long time, but the breakdown of bannings by color and standard since 2017 has been blue 10, green 10, white 4, red 5, black 2. Does black escape bannings? Because it's seen as fairer. Hmm. Hmm. Well, thank you for the donation, McCurry. 
I have not really thought of that. In psychologists, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, maybe, maybe just black hasn't been that good. I think it might just be a coincidence. Because if you go back to like the early days of Magic, we had uh oh white mana. Come on, white mana. Come on, white mana. A we are getting we are getting paid off in every way with this hand for keeping that super risky one lander, but we are getting uh we're getting everything we need. I don't know like necro. There was some super broken black deck, so I think it might be more of just a coincidence than anything, honestly. Fable Fable is a very good card. I don't know. I don't know if I think Fable needs to be banned in like explorer slash pioneer slash historic or modern. Standard, I can see an argument for it. Although the counter argument would be rotation. Rotations are coming. Rotations are coming, and it's gonna naturally be banned, quote unquote, or rotated in in not super long now. Necropotence. <laughs> Who was it that said necropotence? I can't. Remember. Was it Tomer? Maybe it was Chaz from the original podcast. There was someone I made <laughs> made podcasts with that pronounced it in like the most ridiculous. <laughs> I think it was Necropodids. I can't remember if it was Tomer or Jazz, though. I'm disappointed Wizards today. Another arena update, and the touchscreen bug still hasn't been fixed. What's the what's the touchscreen bug? About it. Passing. Well, Nick Phelps actually makes mana now, which is good. Uh, so let's Nick Phelps mana. Playing Mom would be sweet, but this is the kind of deck that can kill Mom. I think we just play Skyclave. Snipe Reflection. Get that out of here. <laughs> I, I'm i a expert on mispronunciations. I would argue if anyone is qualified to discuss mispronunciations, <laughs> it would be me. Out of, probably in the entire world, honestly, if you really think about it. Who better to discuss the wrong way to pronounce things? <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, the cold, the cold. Wait, you can play... I didn't even know you could play Arena on touchscreen, actually. The opponent's going to fry our Skyclave. Down to two cards in hand, though. I mean, we're... Oh, once we get to Eternal Wander, I feel like... Our opponent's going to be sad about it big attack oh do we have to start blocking three six seven eight oh, i think we just take it this turn i think we just take it but it hits us down to nine if we draw land, we're super good. If we don't draw land, I mean, I guess if our board lives, we're super good, right? Actually, we still need the land, don't we? Hmm. We really just want this Wandering Emperor to sweep. Ha ha. Okay, land. Well, now we actually got to think. Do we even Wandering Emperor? Yes. Uh, Marrow's teaser is uh, after this match. We're going to talk about it. It's uh, it's coming. It's coming. Huh. Opponent has two cards in hand. We're at nine. We have, what, seven mana. Uh, do we just have to sweep? That doesn't feel great. So what is the what is the bug, Dr. Shander? It just doesn't work? Well, I'm sorry it's not working. One land, one keep. One land, one keep. <laughs> it always it always works. <laughs> Fifty percent of the time it works every time. Uh I think we do just have to Yeah, I think we do just have to do it. Alright. Yeah, it's Eternal Wander. Take down Eternal Wander. I mean, we're still not guaranteed to be good here, honestly. You live because I allow it. 
Our opponent still has this den of the bugbear too, so they can keep dealing damage. We cost ourselves a lot of white mana symbols. Which is making our Nykthos worse. We will see. Can we book combo? If we can get enough mana symbols, the thing is... Ooh, opponent has removal. The thing with the book combo is it is very mana intensive. We need three to cast it, three to activate it, and one for the Muta Vault. So we can't do it yet. We could do it in two turns if we have the time. We'll see. If our opponent doesn't Den of the Bugbear, it really depends on what they do with the Den of the Bugbear, I think. Hey, what's up, Captain John? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Minneapolis? Wait, do I say that weird? <laughs> do I, I? I didn't realize that was on my list of mispronunciations, but it very well could be. <laughs> add it add it to the list. Add it to the list. Bone it. Kills our wander. Our Nykthos is very off. <sighs> not she old red. Just not she old red. That would be the... Ooh, Chandra. Okay, that's actually kind of scary. What? My hair is on fire? Ouch. Yeah. Okay, we get pinged. Down to seven. We draw a land. That Merkle's ten. Well, this is free, right? So we can literally play this for free. So I guess the combo might actually be our plan here. Pass the turn. So we can Eternal Wander snipe something. And then maybe it's just Book of Exalted Deeds. That might be our plan. That might be our plan about it. I guess we could have just went for the book right there, couldn't we? Yeah. The Fatal Push. It's best when the opponent's completely tapped out. Going for it and then getting got by Fatal Push is brutal. Hopefully our opponent just goes for Den of the Bugbear to get in damage and try to win and then we get to book with our opponent tapped out that would be the that would be the best bet opponent oh is it only one red and eh, might have been worth just going for it then opponents looking at book of exalted deeds fire up that den Fire up that den of the bugbear. Go for it, opponent. It's your only chance. It's your only chance. Oh, they're going for it. Okay. Opponent, den of the bugbear. Goes to combat. Here they come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wandering Emperor. Yes. Snipe it. Yes. We should have waited until the token was not attacking Wandering Emperor. Yes. <laughs> Emrickle's in hand. We just haven't been able to cast it yet. Well, opponent passes. Play the land. I mean, we got to we gotta do the thing, right? There's no... That was a slight punt, but I think we just have to do the thing. So... Uh, one, two... Make white mana... Four mana. Turn on Muta Vault. Book of Exalted Deeds. Get Yarion. <laughs> Go aggro. <laughs> Hit Chandra with the Angel. All right. Well, draw your field of ruin about it. Draw your field of ruin. <laughs> I think that's game. That should be game, right? Like, most decks cannot beat this. Thoughtsey. Oh, Ramerkel. Opponent. Opponent. <laughs> Yoan Leafar. Welcome to the fishbowl. The deck is pretty sweet. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, they thought seized our Ramerkel. All right. I mean, does our opponent realize they just can't win and this game is over? Yeah, we're playing some Pioneer slash Explorer. They should not have land destruction. I had a breakthrough last night. Whispers of the Dross in Drowninicker have an awesome in... Oh. Oh, if they name Emrakul, I... Opponent. We came here to steal your turn, opponent. You scooped in game one and now you're gonna... Oh, they're gonna take Yarion, okay. Sure. Sure. They so there was actually a whole article. I have the article pulled up, I think. 
There's actually a whole article that Wizards published yesterday from the product manager on Arena talking about how they had said, we're not going to print Emrakul because it's too much work. And then in shout out to these people, like huge, huge shout out to them. Random designers, random designers wanted to do it. So they have so much time that's set aside for them to just work on whatever they want. So in that time, some of the some of the programmers decided we're going to try to make Emrakul work and they eventually did it on their own and they made it work well enough that it convinced the higher ups at Watsi to actually add it to the set. So shout out to the people who actually put the work in. It would not be the same. I don't want to live in it like I would be so disappointed. Ooh. I would be so disappointed. Well, play mom. Play spirited. I would be so disappointed if we lived in a world where Magic Online can make Emrakul work and Arena can't. That would be a very, a very sad world to live in. Like, wouldn't that be horrible? Like, how does Magic Online do it? How does Magic Online have Mind Slavers and every weird card in the history of Magic, but Arena's like, eh. Eh, it's a little too much work. <laughs> a little too much work. We don't want to do that. Wow, they hit a murder. I mean, opponents playing this out, I don't know if this means they think they have a way to win or if our opponent is just like, I don't know. They're going to ultimate their Chandra and they're going to like do everything, but uh, this mutable means they just cannot win. I don't know if our opponent just doesn't understand. Opponent passes. Well, we'll play Immutavault. Do we have anything we can reanimate? Thrapes, <laughs> reanimate. May eventually we can meld. Yeah, let's let's Bruna. Get back Thrapes combo. <laughs> I know. I thought that it was supposed to be easier to add cards to Arena. I thought that was one of the one of the upsides. Is like, oh, it's just way easier to add cards to Arena. But I'm not sure that in practice that is actually true. Opponent. Get rid of that gift of the ether board. Shouldn't it be easier to add it to Arena, though? That's the part I'm confused about. I thought when they launched Arena, one of the things that they said, like, oh, this is going to be great because we can just add cards so much easier. We don't have to deal with the, the spaghetti code of Magic Online anymore. So we can just add cards super easily. But I don't know if that actually worked out in practice. In Mediaco Mediagore, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank ya. I mean, how disappointed would you would have been? Would you have been if Emberkel wasn't added? Like, would that have been a big deal or no? We had talked about it. We had admitted that was a possibility. It's something we had discussed because it did seem like it'd be hard. Do you think there needs to be any manis in any format right now? Um. Oh, I really want to draw the meld now. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 They're both one ofs. <laughs> hey. Gisela off the top. <laughs> and uh, we will go to combat. We'll hit this Chandra just a tiny bit. <laughs> that was a good draw. That was not a bad draw. Flip it. Flip it. Oh, Brisella, voice of nightmares, 9, 10, flag, first strike, vigilance, life, like opponents can't cast spells, man, if I leave three or less. <laughs> oh, this is like all of the dreams coming together. Yeah, two one ofs in an 80 card deck. <laughs> opponent. I mean, there's a, oh, opponent, yeah, learn a mutable lesson. Um, There's always things in modern, I think, that could be improved. Pioneer. Green Devotion still annoys me. Although, honestly, the last few Pioneer Leagues, I haven't played against it as much. So maybe maybe the universe is healing and it'll be fine. I guess we should have technically cracked the clue. I don't think anything we do here really matters anymore, though. Uh, hit you with Brucella. Speaking of things that could use an epic animation, Brucella also would deserve an epic animation. Uh, one, two, draw a card. I don't even know what else we need here. We, we have achieved most of our goals. I guess we'll kill that for fun. Uh, restoration of Ajano. Excited to get home from work and craft that Salt I Emerge deck from a couple months ago. I love Elder Defense. Yeah, that's one I wanna, I wanna revisit too and explore. 
uh, about it. I did. I know that would be an easy thing to miss. It is a weird synergy with book in the the Muta Vault. What is the best card for new player? Oh boy. Um. Wow. I don't even know how to answer that question. It depends on so many things. Uh, what format you're playing? Uh, craw worm. <laughs> New players just love big creatures. It's probably what is, what is the 2023 edition of Crawworm? Is it just Colossal Dreadmaw? <laughs> it might just be Colossal Dreadmaw. Talia, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Opponent realizing that the game is ending and scoops it up. Ericos, Brisellas, all of it at once. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, Tyrannus Rex. That's true. That's kind of mythic-y, though. I think it's got to be like a common because a new player is not gonna wanna wanna search for a mythic. New players, yeah, that is true. Arena has proved that. Okay, so that is that's Emrakul number one. We're gonna do more Emrakuling, but there's other news today. There is other news today. Exactly one week from today, we're starting March of the Machine spoiler season and. March of the Machines is the set I am most excited for this year. March of the Machines and Aftermath. I cannot wait. I know Lord of the Rings looks cool. We also got weird... Okay, before we talk about March, I got to ask you about this. What do you make of this? Mark Rosewater said today that we're going back to Ixalan. We knew that. We're going back to Ixalan in, uh, in the fall. Apparently, Ixalan is an underground set. Uh, someone asked Mare about it. And they said they were making an underground set, and Ixalan felt like the best fit. What does that mean? Is that like cave, like crawling through caves? Like what? What is an underground set? What does that even mean? But anyway, a little bit of Ixalan news. The big news. Yeah, I'm curious how that will work too. That seems a lot different than uh, pirates fighting vampires, fighting dinosaurs. If it's gonna be yeah, journey to the center of the earth, mole people. Yes, mole people, mole people. <laughs> Uh, but it sounds it sounds interesting for sure. Uh, oh, not more dungeons. Explorer will probably come back. You gotta you gotta explore the underground. All right, so so yes, March of the Machine spoilers one week from today. I'm hyped for this set. Today we got Mark Rosewater's teaser. If you've never seen this, every set before spoilers start, Mark Rosewater puts this kind of tricky little teaser out to get people hyped. We usually go over it. Let's look at the teaser and see if we can figure any of this out real quick. So uh, a week from today, spoilers start. Here are the things you can expect. Numerous cards that mechanically care about Fraxians. Okay, more Fraxians. That makes a lot of sense. A double face token, one that transforms. So we've had double face tokens before. We've had, but they're more like aesthetic stuff, like promos, where it's like, hey, it's a wolf on one side and a human on the other. This sounds like it's kind of mechanical, like some sort of token that actually, like, you create a token and the token transforms. Uh, that sounds kind of cool, although I worry about, worry about the complexity. Like, it seems tricky to to actually do it. Flibblethip and Elishnord. <laughs> team them up, please. Uh, actually, I really want a Flibblethip team up. Uh, a card that costs X, U, 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 U. Uh, that could be, that could be actually anything. Oh, maybe it's a battle token. That sounds possible. X, U, 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 U. Could be card draw. That's a little expensive for card draw. Could be like a a mass manipulation effect. Um, some sort of mass creature stealing. That might be too expen uh, too competitively costed though. A variant of a mechanic that returns to a premier set for the first time since it originally appeared. A variant of a mechanic that returns to a premier set for the first time since it originally appeared. So I think what that's saying is there was a mechanic in a set at one point. And this mechanic is coming back in mom and it hasn't been in another set since it was first printed. If I'm, if I'm understanding that right, I'm sure there's a lot of mechanics that, that actually meet this criteria. So I don't know. I don't know what that would be. Mutate. I mean, it could be, <clears throat> I could, it could be mutate. I think premier sets are like the standard sets, like the four standard sets each year. They call them premier sets now. Uh, flanking. Uh, we've seen affinity, right? We've had affinity cards. I guess the premier set 
So I think what uh, why why is this premiere set is I guess that would mean the mechanic has probably shown up in like a commander precon maybe a um modern horizon set something like that like storm would be a mechanic that hasn't appeared in a premiere set but has appeared in in supplemental sets Ooh, a mass a mass would make sense flavorfully but boy that mechanic was not very good I wonder if wizards will try to make sure it's not too war the sparky. A legendary creature returns not seen since Homelands. Well, <clears throat> this we should be able to figure out. So if we go to Scryfall, I mean, there can't be that many legends in Homelands. If we go to Scryfall and we go to Homelands, the, <laughs> the best set of all time, and then we go to Legend, uh, there's probably going to be like three or something. They did not print many legends in sets back in the early days. So we should be able to at least narrow this down, right? How many legends were even in home? Whoa, 14, that's more than I expected. All right, let's uh, let's start by rare. Ooh. So what could it, okay, could be Sengers. Can we get Sengers back? Can we get a Baron Sengers? I guess we had a Sengir, Baron Sengers in uh, Commander Masters. What about Grandmother Sengir? <laughs> look at, look at that. Uh, <laughs> Look at that art. Look at that hair. That hair is uh is going going to town. Uh Autumn Willow used to be really good in its day. Maybe Hebsdul <laughs> Hebsdul the Abbot. We we haven't got an abbot in a while. Siorna the Falconer. What is our what is our actual guess here? I mean, I guess maybe you, Joven Chandler team up would make sense, something like that. I don't think it'll be so you got Chandlers, you got these maybe Euron? I don't know. I don't know what one it'll be. I mean, it'll be sweet though. This is, I love when they bring back, <laughs> look at that apple. <laughs> oh, Homelands. What a, what a world, what a world Homelands was. Uh, Joven, I, if I was going to pick one, I would say that Joven or Chandler was the most, was the most likely. Joven looks like a Harley dude. Le does not look like a magic character. He looks like he's in a biker bar. <laughs> Everything about that card is biker, biker bar Harley dude. <laughs> uh, some planes show up in card names that have never done so before. So I expect planes showing up in card names, it's got to be battle, right? Like, is it, what was the, what was the phrasing of the battle cards? Like, it wasn't fight for, battle, was it battle for? I don't think it was battle for, but it was like battle for Zendikar, battle for... Was it just Battle 4? Maybe it was just Battle 4. So I'm imagining that's what that is. Uh, battle 4, planes that have never been in. Invasion, yes. That sounds that sounds right. Invasion of. So I expect that has to do with battles. Ren returns with a new partner. People are saying something about, like, some sort of Phyrexian world tree or something. Maybe it's Ren in this Phyrexian world tree. Ren and, Ren and Flibblethip. Two draft archetypes that have a creature matters component one of which is Phyrexians. I mean, I, I'm excited to see more Phyrexians. I think Phyrexians were done well in the last set. The 10th and presumably final member of the Sword Cycle. We have waited 20... Oh, did I skip one? We have waited 20 years. So we finally get the blue-black sword. Uh, so far, the Gruul Sword has mostly been a casual card. Hasn't made it in standard yet. I guess swords are just slow in 2023. Hopefully they push this one. Like... I think, I think you can push like sort of fire and ice level power level and it'll be fine because the problem is still, you got to pay three mana to cast it and two mana to equip it. And with the speed and snowball aspect of modern magic, it's even if the sword's abilities are really good, sort of meme and, oh yes. Even if the sword's abilities are really good, I think that's just a natural cap on its power. A creature capable of dealing 11 poison counters. A creature capable of dealing 11 poison counters. I mean, it's got to be Blightsteel, right? Like, we have a creature in magic that deals 11 poison counters. <laughs> that is that is Blightsteel Colossus. It's got to be... It's got to be some callback to that, I would assume. 11, 11, trample, infect, indestructible. There's got to be, I don't think it's going to be infect. I think it's going to be like, it won't be, well, I mean, capable of. So, yes. Um, 
it's got to be some callback to Blade Steel. It's got to be like Toxic Blade Steel, Toxic Eleven, Blade Steel, which I hope they do because Monument of Perfection was not was not really good enough. <laughs> we found that out. Here are some rule text that'll show up on cards. You may cast spells with flash or flying from the top of your library. Wizards loves the cast from the top of your library. That's been that's been a trend recently. An aura, a god, or a demigod. So apparently, gods are returning. What do we expect the gods to be in this set? Are we gonna have like Phyrexian gods? Are we gonna get Elish Norn Elish Norn the God? What will the demigods be? Like that's yeah, this is March of the Machines info. This spell can't be copied. That's unique just because I don't oh yeah, I guess we saw Heliod. So maybe it's just them completing the gods. Wait, what was he did Heliod have that text? What was I guess we can go over here. Did Heliod have the demigod text? Is that just referring to Heliod? Uh, return an enchantment that isn't a god from your hand. Okay, so probably another another Heliod type card. I uh, missed this one, where X is the excess damage out this way. We've seen that before. Activate this only if you cast two or more spells this turn. Sure, each player can't cast more than one non-Phyrexian spell each turn. This card is gonna be interesting. If this is competitively costed, it could be a good sideboard card in older formats. We've seen similar rule of law effects uh, be very good. Stuff like Deafening Silence, can't cast more than uh, one non-creature spell each turn. If this is competitively costed, it will be the best version of that effect because who's actually playing Phyrexiads? Plus in standard, it would be, uh, it would be a, um, a good card for Phyrexian decks theoretically. If you're playing all Phyrexians and you don't really get hurt by it, X twice, where X is the number of lands you control. Ren? This, this to me, seems like the kind of line you would see on, like, a Ren ultimate. Whatever the new Ren is that we're getting. Lands you control feels very ren uh, This double doubling up epic line of text feels like something you'd see on a Planeswalker. I'm going to guess that it could be something that's on Ren. It could be something else, but whenever a permanent you control transforms or a permanent enters the battlefield under your control transformed, uh, so more transform support. If an opponent protects it, remove a defense counter from it, this... Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, Wushi. It's gotta be. It's gotta be something to do with uh, with the battles. It's gotta be something to do with the battle cards. And the beginning of your upkeep. If you haven't been dealt damage, uh, about dealt combat damage since your last turn, you draw a card and lose a life. Some sort of bad Bob, probably. Maybe it's an enchantment. It could be an enchantment. Finally, here are some Phyrexian in the set. Phyrexian Bear Rhino, Phyrexian Devil, Phyrexian Dog Warrior, Phyrexian Jackal, Phyrexian Samurai, Phyrexian Shade, Shark, Tree Folk, Fushino, Weird. And here are some creatures fighting them. Moon Folk Ninja, Aetherborn Vampire, Fungus Rabbit, Dwarf Pilot, Raccoon Warrior. We don't have raccoons, right? We don't, this is, will this be the first raccoon in Magic? I'm pretty sure it will be. Goblin Spell Shaper, Wolverine Dinosaur, Elder Giant Dog, Ape Dinosaur Turtle, Cyclops Humunculus. Cyclops Humunculus? That's, that could be Flibblethip, right? Isn't Flibblethip a, humuncli a Humunculus? <laughs> Flibblethip plus... <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, it's gotta be... I am so hyped for this set. Uh, I am, what I hope this is, I hope that this list is, is iconic creatures that are coming back in Phyrexian form. Like, I think that would be super, super cool. Like Phyrexian Doran or whatever. That would be super cool. And I think some of these are probably gonna be more mashups. Like, it seems likely Elder Giant and Dog. Like, what legends could this be that would mash up Elder Giant and Log? Ape, Dinosaur, Turtle. So, like, Kogla with, I don't even know. Uh, Oaken, yeah, so this at, this set's gonna be so good. Like this that I am so incredibly hyped for. Seeing that, like, I already had this pegged as a set I was most excited about this year, but I am even more excited about this set seeing, oh, it's gonna be so good. I really, like, I know I'm always hyped for magic sets. I just love magic. I love new magic cards. So you're probably thinking, oh yeah, Seth, you're always excited about sets. But seriously, I feel like this has a chance to be like an all time, 
in all time magic set. You know, once every like few years, there's one set that really stands out as being like the iconic set of its era. I would say like when we first returned to Dominaria or War of the Spark or original Innistrad, like uh, there's certain sets that kind of that kind of just have this special glow to them. They kind of stand the test of time. I feel like this is going to be one of those sets. Like, I really think that this is going to be one of those sets that just goes, oh boy, we needed that farm hand. We needed to do some ambitious farming with this hand. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, opponent. Uh, well, Field of Ruin. At least we draw land. Rakdos again. Kamigawa Return, I will... Uh, Kamigawa Return, I feel, will have that look of it instead. I could, I think Kamigawa is a, uh, is considered to be a great set. Maybe, maybe Kamigawa's the one. Can you look at my deck? Yeah, let me, let me see. Salt I A. Ooh, phasing of Zalfir. That's uh that is some spice. That looks, uh, that looks spicy. I really want, I really want a Salt I Graveyard deck to work in standard. We always try it. It always does good, like the, during early access day. <coughs> Excuse me, and then it uh, and then it kind of fizzles. But there's so many good pieces for it. And it's just such a cool archetype. Well, hitting a land there is nice. Um, well, well, that's portable hole. How greedy are our explorer players? Do we live in a world where explorer players would be so greedy they would play no non basics? Or no basics. Is it possible that we could get a strip mine here? Oh, I gotta. No, someone just told me about it. I gotta. I gotta look it up. I gotta. I saw they're playing at a like a ski, uh, some sort of ski resort in Pennsylvania this summer. I can't remember the name of the festival, but that one's not super far away. So it it could be possible I make it to that one. About it. I'm gonna do some appraise it. Wow, it look at that synergy. Discard my eternal scourge, eat it with corpse appraiser. Wow. Un unbeatable. Unbeatable synergies. We still haven't seen any basics. Well, we will continue to draw lands, which is nice. Uh yeah, let's just Thalia's Lancers. Thalia's Lancers. I think. Oh boy, what do we take? I mean, I think it's just Nykthos. I think if you don't have a Nykthos, the choice is pretty much always Nykthos. What is the Explorer format? Uh, Explorer is Pioneer, if you've heard of Pioneer. Except um, it's with the cards that are on Arena. So there's some stuff missing still. Although sets like Shadows of Arena Strad Remastered, the new set that dropped today, is helping solve that problem. We're getting, we're getting more and more cards added and it'll soon be full Pioneer. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well. Uh, now we might be in trouble. I did not realize our opponent was full on crimming. Uh, who plays Nicole Bolas? Who plays Nicole Bolas? Kiwi Monifa. Welcome to the Fish Bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop to your finger. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It might be Grim. It is something Krim would do, that's for sure. Uh, huh. Yeah, this is just gonna wreck us. <laughs> the Eternal Scourge combo, too good, too good. Oh, I missed yourself, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was talking about this at the beginning of the stream. My, my uh, <laughs> audio isn't working for some reason. Right as I started to go into the stream, the audio stopped working. So normally I can hear the splash. So my apologies. Yes, gaming. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, we're definitely getting closer. We are slowly, slowly getting closer. Boy, maybe this deck, maybe we really do have a strip mine. I think we just gotta do this though. Um, snipe the corpse appraiser. My judgment is final. Pass the turn. So Emrakul's looking a little bit away at the moment. Opponent taking up to draw extra cards. We'll get rid of the portable hole. Yeah, we're kind of locked under a Nicole Bolas right now that I don't think we will ever be able to beat. 
We do need to Field of Ruin before we scoop, though, because we got to see. Our opponent might actually be greedy enough to not play any... Did not play any basics. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That's a lot of Emrakuls and not a lot of ways to cast Emrakul. Yeah, we just don't have an answer to this Nicole Bolas. All right. Well, Gisela. This is just full-on, straight-up, straight-up crim mode. All right. So, I think we wait... I think we wait and activate our Field of Ruin and then concede. About it. Eternal Scourge. Yum. Some, uh... Some interesting deck building from our opponent. Paz, as we draw planes. We'll play the planes. Let's see if you actually are playing basics, opponent. Put him to the test. Yes, Nicole Bolas just came down way too early. Opponent. Oh, responsible, responsible magic player. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, this Nicole Bolas just runs away with the game. Uh, no, I mean, Nicole Bolas isn't a card that <laughs> isn't a card that I build around because no one outside of Krim actually plays it. <laughs> so uh, we just have to try to attack it, I guess. But yeah, Nicole Bolas isn't, it is, it is a 0% card in, uh, uh, outside of, outside of Crim Life, but as far as actual play, it is not a card that actually sees any play. Do you ever use a good game emote? Um, I will respond to someone saying good game, usually. I usually try to, but I, I do not usually initiate the good gaming. I feel like there is not really much of a benefit to it i think it's easier to end up looking like a jerk than a nice person using the good game emote you're on to so much on it really <clears throat> really interesting i play against nicobolas very rarely and it's always it's always some sort of crim <laughs> like there's a there's a dedicated like grixis Grixis Crim fan base who no matter no matter what they're just going to try to play Nicol Bolas they win win 20 percent of the time but boy the the other uh that 20 percent is just so sweet that it makes up for it <laughs> but yeah that's it's not actually a card that's really <clears throat> taken off as an actual staple or anything oh uh, bone gonna do some boom crushing I'll play a land. Book of Exalted Deeds. Wouldn't mind hitting a... Nykthos. Nykthos would be nice. About it. Yeah, I bet it's pretty good in Brawl. Found it fine. The Corpse Appraiser. About it. What is your all-time favorite standard format? Oh, there's Emrakul. We found our Emrakul. It is still a little bit away, though. Well, let's do some ambitious farming. Grab a plane. I want to see an Emrakul bug. They talked about the potential of Emrakul bugs. Haven't seen any yet. Well, run out some dorks. About it. Gonna thought sees the Emrakul. Uh, so our first match we did, but our opponent conceded before we could actually do anything cool with it. Hmm. Well, it looks like... This might be score one for Krim. We are kind of not really drawing anything. And our opponent, they have gotten to the Nicole Bola stage of the game. Opponent goes attacking. <laughs> Jeez. Um. Okay. Opponent blows up our board. I'll play the land and... Oh, we need three life? Brutal. Well, we will pass. Boy, we are running super bad here. Generally confused since y'all run so many matchups. I always play against the same three decks per format. Uh, I wonder, so Dollar Stigma Sam, are you playing best of three or best of one? If you're playing best of one, uh, maybe try best of three. I think that might, that might uh, change your experience quite a bit. 
Best of three tends to be much less diverse. Best of three really encourages either your deck to be as ridiculously aggro as possible or as ridiculously controlling as possible. There's not really, not really much more to it. Wow, boy. Man, that was not good running at all. Not really much more to it than that. That's just basically, basically what best of one is. Uh, definitely it is easier to get into. So I, I get that part of it. So I can understand why people play it, but I, I always feel bad because I hear people, they're like, ah, like uh, toxic. We got a bad toxic. I not have any fun with playing magic because it's just toxic, toxic, toxic. And whoever wins the die roll wins the game. And I'm like, ah, like, boy, that is a, that is not a magic problem. That is a, that is a best of one problem. Like that is a, that is what best of one is designed to do essentially is to, push those type of matchups but then it is it is a it is a barrier if you've never played with sideboards or you don't have enough time that you want to play a match that could go on for a half hour instead of a match that's going to be three minutes um yeah i i don't i don't know i don't know what to tell people nasip just posted a video where he was talking about how he might have boarded differently on the draw than on the play. I was like, oh, I totally forgot that's even a thing. Yeah, I mean, that does that does matter. Should put a ley line in. Uh, like, ley line of sanctity? Hmm. Does ley line of sanctity do enough? The opponent <laughs> says good game already. Does ley line of sanctity do enough is the question. It is nice that it... Adds mana symbols for Nick those. There's a best of one specific ban list. Not really. There was so there was one there was one time when there was one time when a single card was Oh my goodness. Crims everywhere. Oh how are we running into all the decks that how are we running into all the decks that don't exist and are just like incredibly miserable to play against? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, what a world. About it. Soaring Thought Thief. And Mills a bunch of cards. And Mills a bunch of cards. And opponent plays a Field of Ruin and goes attacking. And Mills some cards. Well, yeah, opponent is on the on the high roll plan. The problem is they're gonna draw some card draw at some point and refill their hand because that is what this deck does. Well, kill the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Portable hole, the Thieves Guild Enforcer. If our opponent does not top deck card draw, then we're in fine shape. Opponent gets in. I mean, we're an 80 card deck, so it's gonna take them a while to actually mill us out. The Raven Inspector. Well, we will play a Field of Ruin and pass the turn. About it. Hey, what's up, Joseph? How are? Oh, they drew it. They have the. They have the card draw spell. Hmm. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Once our opponent draws four, I don't know. I don't know how this goes. Probably poorly. Wow. Okay, or the Atwara, that is kind of fine. Well, we will play a Field of Ruin. We will play... Actually, let's do this. Blow up the Field of Ruin so our Nykthos is protected. Snow-covered planes. Snag it! Yeah, Rogues is, like, such an obnoxious deck to play against. <laughs> It is an obnoxious deck to play against. It is always nice when you beat it, although the <laughs> the angst of playing against it does not really make up for it. About it, going to pass. Crack the clue. I've been good, Joseph. How are you? Good to see you, by the way. Opponent gonna fatal push to the Thrabes. Sure. <gasps> we're getting close. We're getting close. Uh, we're getting very close. Book of Exalted Deeds. For free. Opponent does not counter. Uh, Eternal Wander. Run that out. What uh, what do we say about that opponent? Uh, so, Double Striker. And tick it up. Oh, opponent's gonna our opponent's gonna learn. Opponent. Kills the token. Oh, that's that is fine. That is fine. That oh, we're gonna teach our opponent a lesson. We're going to teach our 
<laughs> Our opponent, a lesson about Emrakul. Jace the Perfected Mind. Yup. Opponent. Enough to draw three. Well, that's good. We want it. We wanted our opponent to have some cards in hand for us to uh, use with this Emrakul. Opponent hits us, mills us. Well, um, let's play a Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of this Jace. And here it comes, Emrakul the Promised End. <laughs> no scooping, rogues. You were not allowed to scoop. You're, you're not allowed to scoop. Tig up. Tig up. Pass the turd. Opponent. How are your cards looking? Oh. Jeez. Well, they're looking pretty good, actually. Uh, well, go to combat. Attack. Get milled. Emrakul, kill it. So this is really all we can do. Opponents just got a handful of creatures. Yeah, pass the turn. <clears throat> pass the turn. Not the best Emrakul. <clears throat> Our opponent didn't have any uh, any removal in hand. She old red. Um, sure. Get drained. I mean, we still have Emrakul. Do we win? Can we win here? How do we do this? So, 14. Oh, we do win here. All right, so we put a counter on this. Touch, oh, we don't win because they can chump. Well, that's still fine. We make them chump. Touch the spirit realm. Get rid of the shield red. Out of here. Go to combat attack you opponent has to chump the double striker they lose i don't know if, we'll see if they see it we'll see if they know opponent mills us mills us you gotta block the double striker you gotta block the double striker okay opponent does see it they jump opponent is not giving up they are fighting the emrakul to the end and the end is coming the end is coming soon opponent <laughs> down to three well we will make a bit of white mana uh Hmm. Yeah, I guess we just make a make a door. Yeah, I guess we just put this in our hand. There's not even really any point in playing it. Yeah. All right. Pass the turn. <clears throat> go rogues, go. <laughs> Wait. What are we getting funded for? About it. Nighthawk. Ooh. Technically, that could take down an Emrakul. Although practically, <laughs> our opponent's dead. Oh, what are you sorry about, Joseph? Did I miss something? I mean, his deck actually kind of works. We beat rogues. Our most hated of matchups. <laughs> rogues. Rogues. Oh, yeah, you can't. Emrakul is cast. So we can't blink Emrakul. Uh, blinking the Shieldred and then flickering the one drop. You're right. That would actually been lethal. A, a turn faster so that might have been worth considering I mean maybe this isn't the worst matchup we do have flyers which is good we have flyers that can block our opponent stuff Emrakul as we saw is kind of absurd we got removal this I mean this could work we might actually go down one Emrakul though we can tutor it up with Thalius Lancers run it like that I know Mono Black is good, but I'm telling you, Seth, this deck is impressive. So much synergy. Ooh. <laughs> Some tribute to Hirobi action. That's sweet. I mean, that uh, that looks sweet, Jonalith. I like uh, I like how cheap it is as far as rares. I found uh, it's been so tough. So it's been so hard to make content about black decks just because they've been so good and popular in standard that it's really tough to be like hey my mono black deck is actually cool please watch it because everyone just hears like 
black and they're like oh grown we've seen this a million times so the deck looks really sweet the deck looks really sweet um i've just tried to stay away from playing too many mono black decks because i feel like that's the that's the reaction but i do like it i like the add counters to the biting palm ninja and some of the some of the sweet sneaky little synergies Melikru, welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big subscription for you thank you thank you thank you thank you doom foretold Ooh. i mean doom foretold is definitely super fun i i think it's a super fun card spear sisters calls another super cool card i mean that looks sweet mother frogger it looks uh it looks very grindy like it should be able to to grind out some value looping history banalia ah remember how good that card was in standard history banalia was so good yeah it looks uh that looks cool when you get a break, can you uh, have a look like you said at the beginning of the stream? I need opinions on changes. Ooh, let me let me see. How's this hand looking against annoying rogues? Oh, all right. I mean, portable hole's good. Touch the spirit realm could be good eventually. Ruin crab. Well, portable hole. Get rid of the ruin crab. We do need to hit lands. We do need to hit lands. I think you should try over the top and explore. You access stuff like Zorn, which at least in my deck kind of breaks the card in a very fun way. Over the top is a super cool card. I love, I love over the top. I played MTG a bunch when the D&D set came out. I played this mono white aggro deck. I don't have enough wild cards to make a good standard deck. So I've just been playing the same one in historic, right? How's it, how's it been working, CC? Like, has the, the plan of just playing it in, in, uh, in historic worked out have you been able to get some wins about it fatal pushes and a land we do need to hit lands oh dear oh dear not like this not like this crack the clue okay we not making it look easy but we technically have hit a land show us the rogue hey what's up uh mc mccool what Really? Sacrificing one of your three lands to mill is aggro. Uh, well, Restoration of Ijano. Apparently our opponent does not currently have a tutor. They must be trying to get to the card draw, I guess, and just really need the graveyard full. Maybe we should have brought in Rest in Peace just to exile our own graveyard. That might actually have been the, the best play. About it. Fable Passage. Passes. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um how do we want to do this <sighs> do we discard book maybe we discard book of exalted deeds prize amalgam's a cool card oh i got i got all the decks pulled up we'll get to them i promise we will uh huh I don't know what to discard here. I don't think we're gonna use book. Let's discard book. Discard book, get back to Raven Inspector. And I think we just pass. Pass and leave up the Wandering Emperor. About it. If we make it to game three, I think we do bring in Rest in Peace. Do you think Marvel, do you want to, I mean, so we've played a couple of games with this deck. Do you want to see Marvel? I actually built, I actually built a Marvel version as well. So we could try it if you're curious. Like we, we have a whole pile of Emrakul decks. We've just been playing the Monoway Devotion one so far, but there is, there is a whole pile that we could be trying. Well, after this match, we'll look at them. We'll look and see uh, if we want to switch it up and try something different. Tig up, Draven Inspector, go to combat. You want to try Golgari? We can try Golgari. Yeah, we'll look at him after this match. Remind me, and we'll we'll look at him and we'll try a different build. All right, there goes Thrabes. Sure, we could have flashed an Avacyn. I think we can get more value if we wait, though. I feel like we're actually in pretty good shape. Our opponent just didn't have any threats. Our opponent kept a bunch of removal, kind of. Well, like, some removal, but they just don't have any actual threats. Emrakul's good. 
Emery, I so one thing I'm wondering. I want to play Seasons Pass, uh, Stone Rain. So I actually, I actually had a Season Pass punt today. I, I tried to build Seasons. I actually did build Seasons Pass, and that was gonna be one of the one of the decks on the list to potentially play today. I didn't realize though we're still missing like one of the most important pieces to the archetype which is there's no dark petition on arena um i don't know i actually put together a, a build of it i i don't know if i wonder if it can work without without dark petition i'm not sure if it can like that's that's kind of the the killer i guess you can play more masterminds acquisitions the upside of Dark Petition, though, was it was two mana. So you could often play it and Seasons Past in the same turn. It gets way harder if you got to pay full price for your tutor, like, to do the to do the loopy stuff that the deck wants to do. Hey, what's up, uh, Ilbig? So, yeah, that's that's kind of what has been uh, been the challenge so far. I'll pass the turn. We're, we're Emmer schooling some... Uh... Did they have Revolt? Apparently. Emmer schooling some arena zoomers. Oh, can someone explain why we need? Yeah, so the idea, the idea of the deck. Um. Yeah, we're gonna run it out. If they counter it, then we can resolve Thalia's Lancer. So wow. Okay. Or maybe we just kill him. <laughs> maybe we just make him die. Tick up on the token. Go to combat. Attack. This has been the easiest game against rogues I think I've ever had. Swing, swing, into the story. Opponent's gonna draw some cards. Sure, sure, sure. Looking a little too late though. Opponent gets smacked. Down to 14, gets smacked. Down to 10, Thalia's Lancers. Gonna find us a Nykthos, I think. It's always, always a Nykthos with the first one. Grab the Nykthos, play the Nykthos. Mana infinite, now we just need the Emrakul. We can, oh, we can touch the Spear Realm. It's gonna take two turns. We might kill our opponent too fast, but we can touch Flicker Thalia's Lancers and then tutor up the Emrakul and just send our opponent to school. <laughs> Off to school with ya. <laughs> uh, I do enjoy playing with Emrakul, I will admit. Uh, well, play the land. Skyclave Apparition. Would you like to counter an opponent? Oh boy. Or maybe we just accidentally win. <laughs> no Emrakul necessary. Archangel Avacyn, good enough about it. Drown in the lock. Sure. This is fine. We want to Emrakul him anyway. Hit ya, hit ya. Down two, three. <laughs> oh, down to three. Touch the Spirit Realm. Channel. Flank Thalia's Lancers. Pass the turn. It returns. Here comes Mama. Uh, yeah. Mom's mom's home. Mom's home about it. Ooh, only seven. Yes. Show, give us your best shot, opponent. Give us your best shot. You better take advantage of your turn because we're playing the next one. Opponent. Passes. Yeah, okay. Uh, planes and Emrakul. Opponent. Into the, yes, thank you. I was worried that you didn't have many cards in hand for us to cast as we control you. <laughs> this is like the most BM thing ever. I kind of want to not attack though. Is that wrong? Is it wrong to not attack here? Oh, opponent, opponent chose for us. Okay. On a rampage. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. Class is in session. Emrakul teaches another lesson. Thank you for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It would be pretty wrong, right? All right, let's look at it. let's look at these decks real quick. And then we'll see. Maybe we'll try a different Emrakul deck. Although the White Devotion one might be the best of the bunch. Temporal Portal. Ooh. What is the... So, Thran's Temporal Gateway. Ooh, trying to cheat Portal of Fraxy into play. I mean, cheating Portal of Fraxy into play is a effective strategy. I've still been playing the... The Trash for Treasury Animator deck in Historic, and uh, 
Portal's really good. Portal's really good. Yeah, it looks, uh, that looks sweet. We also got, ooh, Over the Top for Explorer. I mean, Over the Top. That was one of our first against odds decks. It lives up to its name, and it does ridiculous things. Yeah, you do get some cool upgrades, don't you? Uh, going back to older formats to uh, make even more treasures with Zorn. Kaelin seems good. Yeah, that also, that also looks fun. And then, let's see, Best of One Poison Control. Ooh, oh wow, okay, this is a, uh, this is not exactly what I was thinking of, so this is Poison Control for Historic, eh, um, I don't know what to say about that one, that one uh, seems challenging, so it seems cool, I think the, the hard part is, you just don't have many ways to give poison counters, like you're, very dependent on drawing exactly prologue and if you don't draw prologue i mean i guess i guess aspirants has said i'm always amazed that this card shows up in people's decks uh, i guess it, that is a way you can put a poison counter on someone getting that first poison counter is very important uh definitely looks like it should be funny when it uh when it goes off like you mean get the first poison counter and like sling a bunch of spells with flux channeler you probably can win in a really cool like weird poison stormy way so definitely seems like a, a unique against the odds deck and uh modern demir mill i mean demir mill's uh demir mill's good that looks, yeah. I don't know about Ravenous Trap in the main deck, but I mean, yeah, that looks like a solid mill deck. So what are we, what are we playing next? What is, what is the plan for our next match? Is there a clip or anything uh, out there or Emrakul going off? I want to see how it looks. It looks like nothing actually. Oh, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Ooh, going to Richmond for pre-release. Have fun, Elf. That sounds uh, that sounds super fun. Okay, so here's the options. Um, more more of the the White Devotion Emrakul. We also have Etherworks Marvel Emrakul. We also have Golgari. I don't know if it's very good. We'll see. But like Golgari mid-range Delirium Emrakul. And then just Mono Green, Play of Ram Spell, Hope for the Best Emrakul. Do y'all have y'all have preferences of which one you'd like to see? Yeah, it's it's basically your opponent's hand revealed. Like nothing. Your opponent's hand is revealed, and you can uh, you can click the can click the cards. Golgari, people. So Golgari was, I mean, I guess really both of these. Both of these are based on how would Fight Club em Emrakul synergize? Um, both of these are kind of based on standard decks when Emrakul was around. Put it up for a vote. We could do, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know what? That's actually, that's actually not a bad idea. We can, we can do a poll. There, there was something else we had to talk about anyway. So let's, let's put up a poll and then as the poll's going, we can uh, hit this up real quick. Uh, what, uh, what Emrakul deck next? Mono White, Marvel, Golgari, Green Ramp. All right, poll's going up for two minutes. It'll be at the top of the chat. So get in your votes now while you can. Two minutes, only two minutes. It always ends in a tie anyway, every time, every time. Not every time, but it seems like it happens uh, quite a bit. The other news, uh, the other news recently, actually a couple pieces of news. One of it was uh, one of the pieces of news is TCG Players CEO stepping down, gonna spend more time with family and enjoy his immense wealth <laughs> from selling TCG Player to eBay. Um, I don't know. People have been talking, like, there's been a lot of comments about this of, like, oh, does it have something to do with TCG trying to unionize and how that's been going and all that? I think it's pretty normal when a company is bought out by a bigger company. I think it's pretty normal that there's some sort of deal in place that's, like, current CEO, stay for six months or stay for a year to help with the transition, and then you're out of here because we want to put our own people in place. So, Maybe it has something to do with all the stuff going on at TCG Player. Although I think it's, I think it's just as possible that, I think it's just as possible, or probably more likely, that when your company gets bought out, they are planning on booting you out of there after a period of time anyway. So I think it might just be, 
it might just be coincidental timing right now marvel is winning 68 votes golgari is in second mono white people are done with mono white we've already seen mono white so okay you know what i think we can probably get in both of those we'll do marvel first but we can probably play some games with uh with both of those the other the other news that's kind of and i don't know if anyone else does anyone else care about this stuff maybe i'm the only one that cares about this so i fell down I fell down the rabbit hole of Usenet magic over the weekend. I think stuff like this is like just super interesting and I love the like history aspect of it. So if you're not familiar with Usenet, this is like the earliest days of the magic internet. This is 1995, 1994 magic internet. There's tons of like jank you gotta dig through that's like people trying to trade cards and so forth but there's actually like some really interesting stuff on here people's takes about stuff from the very first years of the game you can see like the very first rules of the game the posts about those you can see people talking about what they thought the best cards were ranking cards like the 10 best green cards from people's perspective in 1994 when there were like 30 green creatures in all the magic or whatever so i think it's pretty interesting to dig around it like i said there's a ton of like trading posts because there weren't many stores back then and if you want to get the cards you needed like one of the ways you did it was by trying to trade for them so you got to dig through a lot of the the jank to find the good stuff but i actually think it's very interesting and along those same lines uh the entire duelist archive was just added to the internet too if you don't know the duelist it's a it was like one of the iconic early magic magazines uh the whole episodes are for free online now if you want to look through them and get a look at like like richard garfield interviews from 1994 or whatever super super cool so if you like magic's history there's a lot of interesting stuff happening on the on the internet recently so all right poll time who was the who's the winner of our poll i got distracted view results the poll says uh marvel with 58 percent followed by golgari well marvel it is let's see if we can etherworks marvel we're gonna start with we're going to start with the non-Karn one because I really want that one to work because I don't like Karn. But if it doesn't work, then we'll switch to the Karn one and try that one. So, 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 what is the plan of this deck? Well, if you weren't playing standard in 2017, I want to say, you might not really know how this works. This was the monster of its standard format. This was the deck that got attuned with Ether Band. It got Emerical Band. Uh, energy was just like such a problem. So the idea of this deck is pretty simple. Uh, we are trying to sneak Emerical into play with Etherworks Marvel. Etherworks Marvel, we need to pay six energy. We look at our top six cards. We can cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cause so we have a ton of stuff that generates energy attuned with ether finds land makes energy serving in the conduit makes mana makes energy woodweaver puzzle knot gains life make energy harness lightning kill stuff make energy rogue refiner world of virtuoso does things make energy pretty much every single one of our card is gonna make energy so the idea is by the time we can cast this on turn four we should have enough mana that we immediately spin it and we pray to the magic gods the eldrazi gods that we hit an oracle and we essentially just win the game on turn four with Emrakul. We could also hit a Ulamog. We could also hit a Ugin. Our backup plan, we got Golos that can get Cascading Cataracts and we can potentially spin it. And that's it. That's a, that is the plan of the deck. Etherworks Marvel, hit Emrakul, win the game. Those are our hopes and dreams. Hey, thank you for the for the gifts of Artsmas Messix. And I apologize for butchering your name. Yeah, they haven't added the, they haven't added the whale to Arena. That was one of the cards that did not get reprinted in Kaladash Remastered, so we ha can't actually redo it. That was actually one of my favorite decks I've ever built. That was one of, I think that was one of the coolest decks I ever built. There was a deck in, I wonder if I can find it. What was the name of it? Uh, I wonder if I can find it. That deck was sweet. I can't remember the name of it. Hmm. Marvelous Paradox. If you want to watch, if you want to watch some old, old school against the odds, I would recommend this one. It's a little weird because it's a, 
a dated standard format. This is standard from 2017, early 2017. This deck was so cool. It, it was a Paradox Engine Aetherworks Marvel combo deck. The idea was you cast a spell, Paradox Engine would untap Aetherworks Marvel, and then we have these things that make enough energy we can spin the Marvel again. Like Aether Tide Whale makes six energy. Aether Wind Basker can make an absurd amount of energy. Depends on how many creatures you control. So the idea was you would actually just like play your entire deck in one turn with Marvel. Uh, uh, with Aetherworks Marvel and Paradox Engine, it was, oh my goodness. When it actually worked, it was one of the sweetest things. One of my favorite eggs I built still. Yeah, I know. We're, we're here. We're here. We're good. Sorry. Sorry. Against the odds history lesson. <laughs> my apologies, opponent. We, we're talking about the history of against the odds instead of playing. Sand looks pretty good. Assuming we don't get thought seized. It looks a lot worse if our opponent thought seizes our Marvel. Oh, okay, which is oven. Sure. Well, land and serve into the conduit. Energy number four. So we need two more energy. Harness Lightning can do it. Which is oven. Mountain. Hmm. Does this deck have main deck artifact destruction? Like, should we just be running out the Marvel? Probably. All right. Oh, this is tough. Like, are they more likely to have a Thought Seize? Or are they more likely to have Artifact Destruction? Probably Thought Seize, right? Yeah, let's run it out. I think Thought Seize is more likely out of the two. About it. Haunted Ridge. Fable of the Me Okay, here we go. Spin it to win it. Spin it to win it. Spin it to win it. Uh, we will play a Wood Reverse Puzzle Knot. <laughs> Energy added. And here we go. Show us a Emrakul the Promised End. Oh, God. Oh, gee. Well, um, hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, uh... Huh. Rogue Refiner, I guess? <laughs> Anticlimatic. That is not an Emrakul. Uh, so we're going to have enough energy, right? We can make a lot of energy. So Rogue Refiner is two energy. This is going to be one. We kill this. And then sack this. Yeah, we can get Rogue Refiner. Let's take Rogue Refiner. <laughs> it's, it's not a punt. How do we control? How do we control that? <laughs> It's not like we can control what's in the top six cards of our deck. I wish we could. I wish it is it is sad, obviously, but oh, about it. Gonna sack to fizzle. Well, yep. Hit ya. Be uh, next time. The good news is that means we're six cards closer to hitting an Emrakul with our next activation. Which should be coming this turn. Because we can sack this puzzle knot for three. Marvel for two. Like, we should be able to do this again. That's the power of Etherworks Marvel, is it just keeps coming. About it. And if our stuff dies, we also also get energy. Mayhem Devil. Fabled Passage. Oh, I mean, winning with Ulamog's okay, I guess, but we really want Emrakul. Oh, we're we're on Emrakul all day. Different different versions of Emrakul, but Emrakul all day every day. <laughs> Abonet passes. Okay, so. Attune with Ether. Get some energy. Um. Grab a land. Oh, we should have grabbed green mana, shouldn't we? Hmm. Okay, well, ow, shock ourselves. Sack the puzzle not get some energy. Emrakul. Emrakul. Yeah, we should have gotten a forest here. That that was a punt. I will actually take a accept a punt for that. Alright. Let's try it again. Etherworks Marvel. Ha ha! Emrakul the Prom is dead. It is cast. Target you. And GG! GG! 
Pona's even got the witch's oven, so we get to really ruin their day. <laughs> We get to we get to make our opponent so sad because we sack all their creatures to their own witches oven. Yes, we would enjoy your turn, opponent. They didn't even play around it. Oh my god, they didn't play around it. Okay, what's what do we got in hand here? Corvald, deadly dispute. All right, so step one. Uh, deadly dispute. Sack. Reflections a kiki jiki. Ping our opponent. Yes. <laughs> Down to 15. Draw a couple cards. Fabled Passage. Crack it. Hmm. I think we should ping our opponent. <laughs> Down to 14. Hmm. Would we like to find a land? Hmm. I think we decline. <laughs> Oh, oh no, the gold. The gold. Uh failing to find is like the best feeling. I love I love being able to fail to find. Uh now now what? This Corvold is annoying. We don't have a way to make our point discard it, do we? Hmm. Well Sack the treasure. Ping our opponent. Oh no, are we are we timing out? Oh my god, this clock is fast. Sack the gilded goose. Ping our opponent. Sack the mayhem devil. Ping our opponent. And then yeah, we're not gonna sack the food for him. All right, that's that's all we got for now. Your go. Enjoy, opponent. <laughs> that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. Opponent called red, and we still have a thirteen, thirteen. That's almost unkillable, which is ridiculous. Like Emrakul is actually good. Hey, Saffron, long time fan. First time I've caught you. I've caught you on Twitch so much fun over the years watching you play. Uh, hope you're doing well and you're having a day well. Uh, Calithria, thank you so much for the kind words and welcome to the stream. Good to have you. Uh, yeah, we will untap. Play a land. Oh, we can't quite spin again. Not that we really need to spin again. Uh, attack you with everything? Oh, I guess we can spin again, can't we? Because we can Legend Rule the Marvel. I mean, I assume we just die. If not, we can spin again here, actually. Or I assume our opponent just dies. Opponent sacks, opponent sacks, opponent blocks. Sure, sacks the cat. Okay, so our opponent... Oh, we get to spin again. We get to spin again. We get to spin again. Oh, I will I will update. Yeah, that was the last deck we were playing. Is White Devotion Emrakul. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about the the legend ruling of the marvels, but that actually that actually does it. Well, hit you to two. Etherworks Marvel legend rule plus two energy, and then harness lightning as a ritual. Pay no energy. And spin the marvel. And well, okay, okay. Uh, how about a couple witches ovens? <laughs> yes, double Eldrazi, double Eldrazi, double Eldrazi. Oh no, were you not here, Rettendorf? We did, we did look at your decks. It was the, the modern mill and the the mono blue poison one, right? <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize you weren't here. If you, if you, I close them. If you send me the links again. Yeah, we almost have Eldrazi draw. No Kozilek in the deck, though. I mean, now this is certainly over. Corvold's a scary card, but Corvold ain't nothing like an Emrakul. <laughs> nice try. Nice try, Corvold. <laughs> yeah, there was a reason this deck was banned in Standard. Uh, there was a reason. This deck, so Marvel was banned too, right? Am I forgetting that? If I'm remembering right... They banned Emrakul. The deck was still busted with just Ulamog. They banned Marvel, 
And then obviously without Marvel, the deck was worse. But then even once they banned, even once they banned Marvel, they still had to ban a two with Ether because non-Marvel energy, just playing like energy mid-range stuff was still so busted in that standard. It is... It was like a, I mean, I always say like historically dominant, which sounds silly after like Okos and Omnas and whatnot, but for its era, before, before we had the Okos and the Omnas and some of that stuff, this was thought of to be one of the most broken decks of like the 2010 era of standard. Oh yeah, Ramen Up Red. Ramen Up Red, yeah, Ramen Up Ruins got bad too. Oh, yeah, that's right. Rogue Refiner. Boy, that's not so many energy pieces. The problem with energy... Uh, yeah, the, the Shadows part of the deck is, uh... This Big Mama Emrakul here. <laughs> that, that is what we're trying to do, is steal our opponent's turns with Emrakul. But, yeah, the... That is the... That is the new part of the deck. I mean, bring in Graveyard, hey. It is hard to sideboard too much... It is hard to sideboard too much because we got to keep our energy production. Hmm. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's try it like that. Try it like that. All right. So uh, these decks, I'll talk about them real quick again, but we, we already went over them. Uh, I think this deck is, the idea is really funny. It seems very much like a very against the odds deck to me. I think the... The challenge with the deck, like, I can see how the combo turns would be really cool, where you, like, give your opponent poison counter, have brawl, have flex channel, or cast a bunch of spells, burn them out of the game. Like, the combo turns seem really hilarious. Uh, the challenge seems to be, there's not many cards that can actually give your opponent poison, so I imagine consistency is probably going to be a... Uh, be kind of a big issue. And also, Mono Blue kind of struggles with actual removal, so I, I would expect this to be a deck that wins, like, 20% of the time or something, but that 20% of the time, so like any good against the odds deck, is going to be so spectacular that it makes up for, uh, makes up for all the losses in between. Uh, the Demir Mill deck looks good. Like, I, I think this looks like actually just a, a very good deck. Not 100% sure if main deck graveyard hate is necessary i think it depends mostly on on your meta but i think uh if you're playing against stuff that has answers to mail then it's or our build around their graveyard then it's probably worth it in the main deck but that actually looks uh looks very solid uh all right steam vents go i mean we got the marble we need a little bit more mana little bit more mana blue boy welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super thank you thank you thank you thank you that is a quick fable of the mirror breaker well ether hub get an energy uh yeah let's just harness lightning harness lightning away the goblin get an energy kill the goblin well we can attune with ether for a land we're actually not that far away from spinning to win not that far away from spinning to win. Emrakul. Emrakul. Oh, well, now we're pretty far away from spinning to win. <laughs> Boo. Well, we can play the fair game for the time being. Opponent. Trail of Crumbs. That's a pretty busted card. Opponent passes. Well, <sighs> hmm. Oh, do we have to kill the goose? That feels bad. I guess we can wait till next turn and sweep. Well, let's attune with Ether. Yeah, Trail of Crumbs is going to be really huge for our opponent. Grab a forest. Play of forest. I mean, we'll draw another one eventually. It will happen. Pass the turn. About it adapts. Yeah, energy was... Oh, that mechanic's so incredibly busted. Opponent gets to draw a card. Yeah, there was Electrostatic Pummeler in it. There were so many, so many energy decks. Our opponent knows about this Brothers Hood end, so I don't know if they're just going to run their board into it. We'll see. Oh, come on now. Opponent, more Trail of Crumbs. So now we have to kill the Goose. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, we actually have to kill the goose. Opponent gets a food. 
Well, there's an Emrakul that's a very long ways away. Uh, Rogue Refiner, draw a card. Get some. We're gonna have a ton of energy this game, that's for sure. Fable Passage, go. Ten mana is a lot. Would you say the energy counters are busted in Commander? Not, not as busted because there's not as many energy cards. So it's. I don't know if there's enough energy cards, especially for two or three colors, to fill your deck with. Kind of like this deck is, where every single. Almost every single card is producing energy. That's much harder to do in Commander because there just aren't that many, aren't that many energy cards. So I think that's the natural check on its power in Commander. All right, untap. Stomping grounds. Well, stomping grounds tap. Go to combat. Hit you with the Rogue Refiner. Opponents down to sixteen. Pass the turn. Hey, what's up, Honor? How are you? Oh, opponent has Corval. That's kind of busted. I mean, I guess we can kill it. It's just very expensive. Well, okay. Harness Lightning's not bad. Harness Lightning, kill the Corval. Opponent still has to sack. There goes a trail of crumbs. Come on, Marvel! Come on, Marvel! About it hits us. Can we get a season's pass brew? I want to waste some wild cards. Ah. So actually, so here's where I met with season's pass. I'll show you the I'll show you the deck in just a second. So I ran into an issue with season's past. Now let's play scavenging is. Hit you with the rogue. Re we are doing this the super boring fair way, but play the land, pass the turn. We're missing one very big P. Come on now, opponent. Drawing every Corvald. Well, okay. Eat your goose. Eat your mayhem devil. Eat your Corvald. I mean, maybe we're fine. Maybe we're still good. Opponent gets a Corval. Sacks a land. And. Plays a land. And. Passes. Well, okay. Stomping grounds untapped. Go to combat. Swing with both. What do you got about? Oh, yeah. I, f I still have to update the deck list. I forgot. It's still Mono White Devotion. Hang on. Opponent blocks. Sure. Drops to eight. Can we do this? Oh, this eats the only creature from our graveyard. I guess we gotta do it though. So grow the ooze. Three damage. And a braid. I mean, we have overcome two core vaults, which is essentially unheard of. That is not a thing that happens. You do not beat two, two core vaults. <laughs> but I think we might be doing it. Oh, what a top deck. Opponent finds a terrace. Well, okay. That's a land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two mana. Two mana. What? Wow. 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 <laughs> well, I mean, at the time, I think eating the rogue was 100% correct. Like, we need to eat the rogue to keep our 6-6 six, six scavenging ooze. And kill the Corvald. So at the time, I think it was the right thing to do. About it. Well, 
okay. Kill the Corvald. Oh, I can't believe our opponent top decked those. That was some very impressive top decking. Opponent untaps and draws. Opponent plays a land. Witch's Oven. Goes to combat attacks. We're running out of time. Oh, another Mayhem Devil. Well, okay. Not what we were trying to do, but we will accept an Ugin. <laughs> which we will negative three. Get rid of those Mayhem Devils. <laughs> we need one more land. I'll show you the season's pass list. I will. We talked about it a minute ago. I think, did I update the... <laughs> There's only one Ugin, but you're right. We are we are du dirty Ugin players with this, uh, with this deck. Uh, opponent. All right. Untaps. We're at nine. We need a single land. A single land. Oh, the exiles. If that went to the graveyard. Ha ha. Well, okay. Emrakul. The promised end. It took us longer than we wanted. We had to hard cast it. Uh, we will play Jingatha. We will sack Jingatha. We will play Fabled Passage. Hmm, what land should we tutor up for our opponent? What land should we find? Hmm, Forest, Swamp. <laughs> or none. <laughs> how about how about none? <laughs> Alright, opponent, you're go. Can you beat an Emrakul? <laughs> uh, vote it. Deadly Dispute. Gonna draw a couple of cards. Plays a land. Sacks the food to gain a little life. Passes. Well, 13 ya. Down to one. Pass the turn. This is how the deck's supposed to go. This is not the plan. We're supposed to cast it with Marvel, but we'll take it. We'll take it. And about it. G, G, scoops it up. Oh, that was pretty good. That was, that was pretty good. Maybe Emrakul's, like, overall, we've been winning with Emrakul's, right? I feel like every, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, this is cold. Every, every Emrakul deck we play, we've been winning with. So maybe Emrakul's just good. One thing I wonder about, like, Emrakul hasn't been, Emrakul hasn't been great in Pioneer. I wonder if that changes coming to Arena. Like, not that many people, not that many people actually play... Not that many people actually play a uh, pioneer compared to arena, so maybe just more people exploring it will will help. So as far as the season pass, so not to say there's not a way to brew a season's pass deck, but the traditional combo that made the season's pass deck work in standard was you season's pass, uh, you you play a mana value uh, chain from one up to like six or seven, whatever. So you want like spells, things that are going to be in the graveyard. So the idea is you like kill stuff, thought seize, kill you, discard you, you know, just play the control game plan. And then you uh, dark petition to get seasons passed. Seasons passed gets everything back from the graveyard, including dark petition. And then it puts itself on the bottom of your library. And then next turn, you dark petition to tutor up the seasons passed. And then you do it again. And you just have this, unless you're opponent finds graveyard hate you just have this endless endless loop of removal and sweepers and card draw whatever you want the challenge i ran into trying to build it in the the traditional way is dark petition doesn't exist could you build a could you build a deck uh mind splicer apparatus with seasons past yeah sure i mean yeah you could build mind splicer apparatus seasons past but you still kind of just have like the one shot issue like, you still kind of have the issue that Seasons Pass, like, one time is kind of sweet. It's like a like a draw five or something. A six-minute draw five is, um, that's that's powerful. Um, but what made Seasons Pass, like, oh, very hard to beat? I Well, actually, there were two things. 
There is the other thing that we left out of this conversation is graveyard hate is a thing now. When when Wizards printed Emrakul, this was like Wizard is so ridiculous. I don't know what was going on in Wizard's mind. Wizards had this thing that they were like, oh, we're printing these like powerful gra uh, graveyard cards in Innistrad. We're printing Emrakul, which cares about you know a cost reduction, Delirium. So we don't believe there should be graveyard hate in the format. So there was literally no great. And I mean, when I say no graveyard hate, I mean no graveyard hate. There was no Tormod script. There was no Soul Guide Lantern. Rest in peace, Leyline of the Void. So you just had free reign to be like, I'm gonna turbo fill my graveyard for Emrakul, and uh, you can't do anything about it. Or Seasons Past. So all that to say, Seasons Past is cool, and and I think that uh, we will definitely play it. Uh, but. I think that's going to be the check on its power is the lack of Dark Petition. Can you play another tutor instead of Dark Petition? Yes. Uh, although the challenge is <clears throat> the deck wants to get in a position where you're doing this every turn, where every turn you're like Dark Petitioning, Seasons Pass, getting back my graveyard and casting some removal to like make sure you're not doing anything and just do that again and again. Dark Petition being two mana makes it way easier than if you have a five mana tutor. I think I would probably, I guess, trade out the dark petitions for for Mastermind's acquisition, I guess, would be the would be the way to go. Mastermind's acquisition, I guess it makes it even spicier because you can tutor your sideboard. I was planning on playing Dark Petition in one Mastermind's acquisition and then tutoring like finishers from the sideboard to actually close out the game. But then I realized Dark Petition uh, didn't exist. So I think we can definitely still build a deck around it. Not having Dark Petition does really hurt though. Like that's kind of the, that's kind of the biggest missing piece from building the traditional build of the deck. Uh, the only problem with Diabolic Intent is you need creatures. I mean, you could probably build a... You could probably build a Seasons Pass deck that has creatures in it, but most Seasons Pass decks are very creature light, so I think to make Diabolic Intent work would probably have to... Would probably have to intentionally include t uh, creatures or tokens or something like that. Grim Tutor, the life loss might be a concern, but I guess if you had weathered the storm to gain back the life. Are we playing Prized Amalgam sometime? Uh, I'm sure we'll play Prized Amalgam sometime. Yeah, I'm excited to try some Hammer Time. The question is where to play it, I guess. Do you play Explore Hammer Time? Like, I think the deck is better in... I think the deck is better in uh, Historic, but part of the reason that it's better in Historic is because it has uh, whatever the Alchemy Cat is that is another way to equip your hammer. Yeah, dig up. I mean, you could try to do the same thing with... You could try to do the same thing with any tutor. You're just going to need a ton of mana to get the loop going. Uh, the more mana it costs, the more mana... Like, looping Seasons Past in Dark Petition is eight mana. Yeah, two mana for the tutor, si uh, six for Seasons Past. So that loop is uh, is eight mana. If your tutor is four mana, then you need 10 mana. If it's five mana, then you need 11 mana. And ideally, you also want to be able to cast other stuff. Like, if you're just looping Seasons Past, you're not really doing anything with the cards you draw. So that's just something to keep in mind. Like, efficiency is pretty valuable. Oh, where's our marble? Oh, Rogue Refiner draw a card. Play the Dablad past the turn. <laughs> hey Seth, how's it going? Wow, this deck gave me some flashbacks. Yeah, this is like old school, old school standard. What decks from Pioneer are now fully on Arena? Uh, I mean, I think a decent amount of them. We can, uh, what do we want against Control? Chandra. Can go down the Ugin. Probably, well, we saw Yarion. They might have some creatures. Probably bring in some counters. Go down to Golos. And maybe, yeah, I guess Fry seems good too. Maybe something like that. Yeah, let's try it like that. So if we look at the Pioneer meta, it's actually pretty easy to check and see if, if a tier build of a deck is on Arena. Hang on, let's do this match and then I'll, and then we'll look we'll look at the Pioneer meta. I saw Wizards. Wizards had ooh, ooh, double marvel. Wizards had that stat that it were 95% to Pioneer uh with this set. I wonder 
I guess I just don't know what, what they, how, how are they counting that? If it's nine, 95% of like the decks that are at the top of the meta, that might actually be true. There's probably, uh, I would think if you went through the like cards on the metagame page and the decks on the metagame page, we might actually be 95% of the way to having all of those decks. Uh, definitely not 95% of the way to having every card that is legal in Pioneer. So if the idea is to have every Pioneer legal card, then I don't think we're at 95%. I think we're at a relatively high percent. Uh, all right, opponent, I'm gonna absorb. Blaze a land. Hmm. Well, let's ether hub and ether works. Oh, oops. <laughs> oh no. <coughs> we actually wanted energy off of this. Playing this instead of ether hub is actually kind of bad here. Uh, grab a mountain. Either works Marvel. Yeah, that costs us an energy. Pass the turn. So yeah, what are we missing as far as sets? We can look at the decks in a minute. Opponent, a Tuara. I mean, if we just look at the... Oh, God. Oh, my God. Opponent, to Fairy. Boo. Sure. I mean, the good news is Emrakul does kind of... I mean, if we actually get to Emrakul, it does kind of wreck control. That's one of the upsides. Go, Los. Grab an Ether Hub for energy. Pass the turn. So if you actually look at the sets, phone it, cycle shark typhoon. We're so we're back to. We're back to, uh, I mean, I guess even just looking at the sets, we're we're a big chunk of the way there. So we're missing a scatter, uh, a smattering of cards from Kaladesh Amonkhet that didn't end up in the in the remastered sets. Uh, they tuck Golos, okay. Well, okay, Marvel. And serve into the conduit. <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Spin it to win it. Spin it to win it. Aww. Alright, Golos. Boo! Not what we wanted, but we'll take an Ether Hub and get an energy. I mean, I guess we've just ramped so much with this Golos. We're, we're just about to hard cast this Emrakul, so I guess this is still fine. About it. Gonna draw a card. I mean, Emrakul's really tough for control to beat. Supreme Verdict sweeps our board. Four, five, six, seven, eight. This gets us some energy. Reduces the cost on Emrakul. Sure. Opponent. Gonna untap some lands. Yup. Well, uh, land. And Emrakul the Promised End. <laughs> How do we like this, opponent? And the control player scurries away. It has been a good day for beating Crim decks. <laughs> it has been a good day for beating Crim decks, indeed. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, it would have been sweet to control our opponent's turn, but seeing a Teferi control player like scoop to one of your cards is still pretty satisfying. It is still pretty satisfying. Why don't people play, why don't people play, uh, yeah, they, they're done. Back to Hearthstone with them. <laughs> oh, so, sorry. Sorry, Arena Zoomers. Sorry, Arena Zoomers. Uh, so as far as the sets, like, these are what we're, we're missing. OG, well, not OG, middle Ravnica, return to Ravnica block. We're missing Theros block. We're missing Khan's block. And we're missing Battle for Zendikar block. Those are the blocks that we're missing, along with several core sets. So I guess mathematically, what are we, like 80% or something of the actual sets? Along with, as I said, some random like cards that didn't make it in remastered sets. So that's actually like not bad. We're probably 80% of the way there, just going by the sets that are on the client. If you go by decks, if we go back to Pioneer, this is super easy to do. Uh, if you just pull up a, if you pull up a meta deck, 
like, uh, let's pull up these top 10 decks. We can do this in, like, a minute. This should be pretty easy. Uh, so if you pull up any meta deck and you go to the deck page, if you do edit copy, you'll have the ability to change the format of the deck. And if you change it from Pioneer to Explorer, this will show you the, in do preview, it'll show you the missing card. So, like, for example, Tier Rakdos, biggest thing we're missing is Dreadbore. That's a legit, like, staple removal spell. That's a big, that's a big piece we're missing. We're also missing Urborg, which shows up as a one-of in some decks. Uh, it's not, like, super duper essential but it is like if you're gonna say complete pine uh complete pioneer you gotta have you gotta have that on there uh if we go to grease fag missing abrupt decay another pretty popular removal spell so missing one card if you go to nykthos i think nykthos might actually just be at fully complete in a the full pioneer version oh no i'm oh <laughs> Ah, uh, not even close. Chain Veil, of course. Uh, combo piece and Oath of Nyssa. So, a lot of these decks are, like, missing a card or two. Uh, if we go to Is It Indomitable Creativity, what is creativity missing in Pioneer? It's missing its finishers. This is actually one of the decks that just doesn't exist because Xenagos and World Spine Worm are missing. So, those ones are not there. So... <clears throat> I think what Wizards is saying, mathematically, if each of the top tiered X is missing like a card, I guess that's probably 95%. If there's 75 cards in your deck and you're missing one of them, I guess mathematically you'd be 95% of the way there. Although I guess those missing what those missing cards are really matters. Uh like Yes, we have 95% of Indomitable creativity, but without Xenagos or World Spine Worm, the deck actually just straight up doesn't exist. Uh, why? Why is someone playing Prairie Stream? Are people really playing these lands? <laughs> I haven't seen these lands. Oh, I guess uh, they have the land types. But yeah, so, I mean, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. I think 95% would be a little bit more optim uh, like too optimistic uh, compared to how I would view it. Just because, I don't know, when you're missing that really important card to your deck, it, it feels like the entire deck isn't there in some cases. Like, uh, it, uh, yes, you can play Mono Green Devotion, but if you don't have the Chain Veil, you're not really playing Pioneer Mono Green Devotion. Yes, you can play something with Indomitable Creativity, but if you're not getting World Spine Worm and Xenagos, you're not really playing Pioneer Indomitable Creativity, so. Oh, they're only counting cards that were played at the Pro Tour. Okay, I mean, I don't think that Wizards... Hey, what's up, Cube? How are you? I don't think that Wizards, um, I don't think they're lying or anything like that. I hope it didn't come across that way. Like, I'm sure that their 95% number is correct based on how they were defining it. So if it's 95% of the cards that were played at the Pro Tour, uh, that is probably very true. Muna, Munzo, happy Tuesday to you. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, I think what we need is like three or four more remaster, uh, remastered sets to go through the missing blocks. So like Shadows of Rainestrad remastered for Return to Ravnica, for example, things like that. Uh, and then, now yeah, we got a Marvel. And then, uh, and then probably a master set to to finish the deal, to get the, the missing pieces, the core set cards, stuff like that. Will you brew Writhing Township now that it's on Arena? Is that the, the Red Meld pair? Oh yeah, missing that is kind of annoying, isn't it? No. All right, what do we have for this puzzle box? I mean, we should be set up to just spin this marble if we don't get thought seized. Hey, what's up, Paladin? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hopefully your family day is going... Oh, no. Azika's cherried in the graveyard. Well, maybe our opponent's deck is going to be a little more degenerate. All right, Grace Fang gets back Azika's chariot. I don't know if we're playing graveyard hate. That's an issue. Yeah, Grease Fang, if you don't have the answer, is pretty busted. And we lost the die roll, which is doubly problematic down in 19 i mean we're gonna be able to spin the marvel theoretically but i'm not even sure that's gonna be i'm not even sure it's gonna be enough no they're puzzle not like we got the energy but our opponents just got the grease fang clock going dragon 
Archmage. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for the sub streak. Big scoop cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for swinging by. Good to see ya. Do you think we'll see uh, opposing fast lands in... <laughs> wow, okay. Oh, they have parking up. <laughs> sure. Jank them out. Jank them out. Yeah, that's... I mean... Grease Fang is like the glass cannon of this format. Siege Wino, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grease Fang is definitely the the glass cannon, the glass cannon uh, belcher of of Pioneer and Explorer. It either, I mean, it either does that or you play Graveyard Hate and Removal, and it is the saddest rat. <laughs> When when things go wrong, it really is like uh, you gotta think of it like dredge or something. It really is. It really is just like that. It really is the same thing where when it goes well, it looks like oh my god, this is like this is absurd. This is broken. But when it doesn't go well, it is equivalent to like I'm hard casting my stinkweed imp. <laughs> it's a one one. For, it's a one two for three. I'm hard casting a narc amoeba. <laughs> attack for one. <laughs> oh, it does make me it does make me feel for best of one players though oh boy all right well this hand's not good but i guess we'll keep it it makes me feel for best of one players because we're just like oh we'll go to the sideboard and we'll bring in things that slow this deck down but in best of one honestly i got a question for you like if you're a best of one player why why do you play best of one what is uh what is your your reason is it just a time thing is it a time thing? Is it a, I'm intimidated by sideboarding because I've never done it before thing? Is it a, I like the, I actually like the, how the, the play patterns are? Like, everyone likes different things. I don't know how to side, I think I'm going to have to make a video about the, the basics of sideboard. Like a, like a sideboarding 101 video. Time and lack of wild cards. The time thing makes sense. I will say, I wouldn't let lack of wild cards uh, hold you down because a lot of the best, a lot of the best sideboard cards are going to be commons and uncommons. So it shouldn't be like duress is one of the all-time greatest sideboard cards in the history of Magic. So I think you can build a pretty good sideboard without having to spend a bunch of higher rarity wild cards, which is nice. The time thing definitely makes sense. I can definitely see that. Like, sometimes you don't have a half hour for a match and you just want to get in a quick game of magic. Yeah, I guess that's another perspective. Is there anyone who started with best of one that switched to best of three? How greedy are we? I mean, we got to play this, right? If they go, like, end of turn, Grizzly Salvage, Mill Parhelion, have, have Rat... I don't Mill Sky Sovereign... Well, I mean that's still pretty good for our opponent. So I guess our opponent might just have the full the full thing. All right, pass the turn. Boo, boo, rats! Opponent land. I started with best of one, but switched to best of three once I saw more streams, learned how to sideboard. Ooh, all right, no Rafine, that's good. Or uh, Crease Fang, rather. Yeah, if you're someone who started with best of one and switched, how was your experience, bad? Because the thing is, like, I definitely know that I'm. A magic boomer or whatever like if you're someone who's been playing if you're someone who's been playing paper magic uh or even just playing any magic even digital magic for a long time best of three is just normal it's what you know yeah i think we just pass we can't we can't marvel next turn off of rogue refiner anyway because we'd have to spend an energy so leaving up removal for Grease Fang's probably the best bet. Uh, put it. How do you think we'll see opposing fast lands in Mom? What kind of lands? Eldritch Evolution. Okay. Oh, that's a new addition. I wonder if Eldritch Evolution's worth it in Grease Fang. I assume they're getting Grease Fang. All right, gets a Grease Fang. Well, we will kill the Grease Fang. Not dead yet. About it passes. Well, okay, a tune with ether. 
We should be able to spin next turn. Attune with Ether, get a forest. Play the forest. So we're up to five energy. Rogue Refiner, six, seven energy. We do have a bunch of finishers in hand, but we are to spin it to win it mode. Get in, hit ya, 17. Emrakul's coming against the rat. Um, how do you think we'll see opposing fast lands in Mom? And what kind of lands has to be reprinted soon? Ally fetches, ally canopy lands. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the big one is, I think the, the allied fetches are the biggest ones. I mean, it could be any land cycle in Mom. It makes sense. Oh, Wall of Chaos, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got no sound today, so I can't hear the splash. So thank you for reminding me. Wall of Chaos, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, my apologies. Thank you so much, Wall. What were we talking about? Now I, I've lost my I've lost my thought. Oh, it could be any land. It could be any land cycle. A lot of times we've seen like half a land cycle, another half in the next set. So I think that's why fast lands is a pretty realistic possibility. But it could also it could also be something else. That's definitely a possibility as well. But I would say <laughs> discounting reserve list issue. Oh, God, we got a lot of finishers in hand. Come on, Marvel. Show us that Emrakul. Ugh. Ug ug ug. Well, um, we're the virtuoso. <laughs> Make a little energy. <laughs> try again next turn. I mean, part of the power of Marvel is we do get to try again next turn. Hit you down to eleven. The puzzle not lets us do it again. They're getting better. They're getting better. Bear's finally started to stand up for himself a little bit. It was just it was just Bear being afraid of CC. But now Bear Bear and CC mostly just uh, mostly just tolerate each other and bears a couple times like he he has this irrational fear that cc is going to come for his bone so he'll be chewing on a bone and if you've ever seen a dog with like another dog uh that comes towards their bone they kind of give him the like, like no you better not be coming to my bone he'll he'll do that with cc i'm like come on bear like you don't need to worry about it bud she she literally has zero interest <laughs> She has zero interest in your bone. Like you, you don't gotta worry about it. But it was, I think it's actually a good thing because it, at least it's showing he will stand up for himself a little bit. I want to build a pioneer deck. What deck do you recommend? Well, Wall of Chaos. What kind of, what kind of? Yeah, Thalia Tribal sounds sweet. That could be a fun, uh, a fun against the odds. What kind of archetype do you like? What's your, what's your play style? I think that's going to be the the big question because there's really pioneer decks of everything from aggro to control to combo. Oh my goodness! Can we get enough energy to spin again? Wow, we are low rolling. So if we get a Marvel Legend Rule, no, I think that is enough. Okay, so get a Marvel. Keep the untapped Marvel. Two energy, and then we can sack the Puzzle Knot. Back up to seven energy. Sooner or later, we're going to hit. Uh, all right. I mean, sure, I guess. Boo. This isn't how we want to be doing it, but whatever. <laughs> Cast an Ulamog. Eat your black source. Go attacking. Well, Ulamog's not as cool as Emrakul, that's for sure, but... I've actually been playing, I should pull up these stats. Let me see if the record's still good. I've been playing Gruelin Standard just as a, like a fun, fast aggro deck to rank up with. And I recently hit a bit of a, a bit of a downturn, but it's actually been, it's actually been really good. My, oh, where's my stats? I don't know why it's split it up into three different, <laughs> It's all the same deck with zero changes, so I don't know why it's split up here. But, um, 1 and 0, oh, so 5 and 2, 18, 18 and 7. It's like a pretty solid, like, 70% win rate over 20 some matches. So if you're looking for something aggro that can rank up pretty fast, that I haven't seen a lot of hype about, but. I actually think Gruelin Standard is a is a pretty sweet option for for ranking up. It's been a lot better than I expected it to be. 
Yeah, I could see I could see Emmercool being a mono green devotion one of. That seems that seems realistic. I feel like there's some things you can do in historic. Wizard just needs to unban some cards that they have banned if people are going to turn three or four kills with Belcher. I don't really think Bolt and Counterspell are really that overpowered anymore. Hmm. Oh, we don't have any interaction. Ugh. This is one of those hands that's like, what do you do? We have the energy to spin Marvel on four, but is spinning Marvel on four even good enough against Grease Fang? Probably not. Oh, into the zero lander. Okay. Uh, well, five cards it is. Emerkel bottom. Golos bottom. Well, this is not a good hand. Hey, what's up, Winston Churchill? Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm trying to get a loan from Card Hoarder. Do you know of some way to provide proof of an account other than the original sign-up email? Because I don't have it because my account's from 2016. Kid Goozy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, wait, you need your... What do you need? I'm confused. You need your original sign up for magic online oh god i would i would uh contact their customer service i didn't know that was a i didn't know that was a requirement honestly i don't think i would be able to find my original my original moto sign up paperwork from 15 years ago or whatever so i i have to imagine you're you're probably not alone in that position, so I don't know. I don't know what else you can do, but I would definitely contact them because I imagine a lot of people have that issue. Yeah, Mar uh, Mero did confirm that we're getting the the tenth of the sort of X and Y cycle, and the Demir one is the only one is the only one that we're still missing. So I think it's a pretty pretty safe bet that it's going to be the Demir sword. Well, play the land, pass the turn. Emrakul, currently 12 manas. About it. Land. Grizzly salvage. Well, finds an Azekas chariot. And a million can't stay aways. Yeah, this is... Oh, boy. This is Aetherworks Marvel Emrakul. We still... We're going to try to get in a... A game or two with the Golgari build. It's still on the list. About it, Gobat. Oh, we're we're kind of in trouble here. We are kind of in trouble. Well, let's block. Yeah, this is bad in a bunch of ways. Mm, yeah, because they can just reanimate the Grease Fang and get the Chariot. Oh, uh, we're gonna need. We gotta draw Marvel. Basically, we're kind of fizzling. We need to draw the Marvel, and we need to draw it now. Wait, you will be disappointed. Uh, I mean, our record's been good with every Emrakul deck we've played, so I think it's partly because arena players have no idea how to play against it, but it has felt it has felt very good. Puzzle not so bad. Oh, Puzzle Knot's actually like one of the most important cards in the deck. So I think Puzzle Knot's really good. So the power of Puzzle Knot, it might not be apparent at first glance, but it takes it takes six energy to spin Aetherworks Marvel, and Puzzle Knot is one of the one of the only cards that actually adds six energy for a relatively low price. So it's actually you know those whiffs with Marvel when we when we don't hit anything. Wood Reaver's Puzzle Knot's one of our get out of jail freeze for when that happens because it actually gives us enough energy to spin again. So it might not look great right now. Cause well, I mean, you also gotta remember we molded five, like we mold and then we got the zero lander on six. So this is a five card, a five card opening hand. Most stuff's not going to look good with, uh, with a five card opening. hand. we have cast a lot of Emmer goals. We have taken, we have taken several of our opponent's turns. We've also had opponent scoop before we take their turn. But yeah, we have controlled our opponent. Um if you haven't seen it, it's you're gonna be a little disappointed. It's not very climatic. It's actually like 
our opponent's hands just revealed and nothing nothing changes there's no like big animation or nothing nothing epic it's it's actually pretty pretty toned down but it is functional which is the most important thing Ugh. that's a lot of emeralds to be drawn yeah we're probably done with this one yeah, the rope starts super fast. I guess they were worried about people taking too long playing Emrakul or something, but the rope starts, like, immediately. The rope starts like it is your opponent's turn and you're doing nothing, even though you're trying to control your opponent's turn. Yeah, Emrakul is one of those cards that definitely deserves... <clears throat> definitely deserves an animation. Oh, they found the Parhelion. All right, yep, yep, five, four, dead, sure. Well, we let's try. We'll try the. We'll try the Golgari version. The Golgari version. Ah, it's the version I'm probably most skeptical of, honestly, as far as it actually being good. But it's also very like, ah, very much like the original standard decks of, of Emrakul. Like, it reminds me of the deck that that pretty much dominated the standard format, where. It's very mid-rangey. You're trying to play a bunch of card types to reduce the cost on Emrakul. Rather than ramping into Emrakul or cheating into play, you're playing in the, the fairest Emrakul way possible, which is we got artifacts and enchantments and lands and creatures and planeswalkers. Like, trying to get every card type to reduce the cost. Trying to fill the graveyard with Seder Wayfinders and Vessel and Ascencies and so forth. And then we just hard cast the Emrakul. We can tutor it up with your first Oof. Uvin Wald. We can also tutor up Ishkanas or Seder Wayfinders. And I could probably use some more some more one of tutor targets uh, outside of Ishkana and Emrakul, but let's let's give a let's give Golgari a try. This is the this is the build we haven't tried. Trisk Mono Black. Trisk and Ecophobia is definitely a definitely a challenging fun build around. The, I feel like we might have played a build like this at one point where you try to try to drain your opponent little by little. Yeah, it looks uh, that looks fun. Theory. Triskaidekaphobia is definitely a a chill, a satisfying card to win with. Challenging but satisfying. What about fight rigging Golgari with Registar Shakedown Heavy? Probably a bit more against the odds. Yeah, it could be another. I mean. Fight rigging is a good way to cheat things into play. I wonder if there's a way to to mash it together. Like, is there a way that you can... Hmm. Is there a way that you can have the fight rigging plan, but also... But also fill the graveyard enough that you could hard cast Emrakul? Opponent. So this is basically just... Golgari, Golgari Delirium, Golgari Delirium Emrakul, um, hmm, yeah, let's Overgrown Tomb, Liliana, take her up, so, kind of a Golgari Graveyard style Emrakul deck, really, Trying to play a a mixture of card types so you can actually reduce the cost on Emrakul. I think this might be the... Well, we'll see how it goes. The opponent cling to dust to draw a card. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's discard the Swamp. I've been looking, but I haven't found anything new to use. Neoform or Eldritch Evolution on an Explorer. Yeah, I feel like so something like Vanifar combo would be would make good use of it potentially. I think. Something suspicious is going on. Uh, but, wow, hands are going to be very quickly emptied here. Um. Well, discard scavenging ooze. Play Shigiki. Play a land. Take up Liliana. Alright, well, Liliana battles. Who's Liliana survives when it pitches extinction event? Undaps. How about some quick historic mono green? No Nykthos. Who? What do you. 
Wait, mono green, no nix like mono green aggro Joseph? <laughs> Haven't you ever heard that sounds I mean mono green can be pretty good. Oh, that hive of the eye tyrant could be an issue here. Opponent draws a card. Oh, oh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just tick it up. This is very awkward. This Hive of the Eye Tyrant's the problem. The Hive of the Eye Tyrant's gonna be the card that lets our opponent win this game, I think, if they, yep, they hit the land. So I think the Hive of the Eye Tyrant should win our opponent this game. Any deck with Nykthos Emrakul sounds like a plan. Yeah, Nykthos is very good at making a lot of mana for sure. Have you seen Golgari Boat making the rounds? Runs Glisten discard over red stuff. Um, we just played against Grease Fang that had. We just played against Grease Fang that had uh, Glisten in it. I wonder if it's uh, along those lines. About it. Yeah, what do we do about this? I'll take up Liliana. Opponent to tap. So we're behind on ugh, every metric. Opponent's got Castle Log Wayne. We don't. Opponent's got a way to attack our Liliana. We don't. We are nowhere near Castle. Yeah, this Golgari build, I think, is pretty. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's so, it's like so clunky and fair. Opponent. We draw a Meat Hook Massacre. That's not doing anything. We will pass the turn. Oh, I don't think I've seen that build. That sounds, uh, that sounds sweet. Opponent. Wow, they drew a lot of Lilianas, that's for sure. I mean, our opponent's also exiling our graveyard, which is making our Emrakul plan worse. They're, they're eating our card types, which is, uh, an issue. Down to 15. Well, Conduit of Worlds is actually probably our about, about our best draw here. Conduit of Worlds actually seems very nice. Still not sure it's... Hmm. Still not sure it saves us from Liliana Ultimate, but... All right, play the land. We can't cast anything this turn, right? Not really. Hmm. All right, pass the turn. About it, untaps. Kind of what a world seems very nice. Opponent, field of ruin. Hive of the eye tyrant. Can we stop Liliana from ultimating? Is a real question. That I'm not sure. Liliana ultimating seems very, very bad for our living. Opponent eats a land, hits us. Down to twelve. Takes up Liliana. Well, crack the land. Kind of what a world's, uh, it's a crucible of worlds. So we get to play lands from our graveyard. And then if we haven't cast another spell, once per turn it lets us play a spell from the graveyard. Hmm. Tyver's also interesting. Hmm. What do we do about Liliana is the question. All right, play Tyver. Play Tyvar. Take down Tyvar. Get back Shigiki. Play a Swamp. Pass the turn. So we can activate Shigiki to fill our graveyard. Maybe find an answer. How many Emrakuls have we cast? I feel like we've cast an Emrakul almost every game. We haven't had too many games where we have not cast an Emrakul, I don't think. Yeah, the Shadows of the Past cards are going to be fun for Historic. I mean, today has been an Emrakul day, but there's... Oh, no, a whiff. But there's been a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that we want to get to. So there's a ton of stuff we can explore as we're waiting for uh, March of the Machines. About it.
So could Emrakul Reanimator work? Sort of. The main problem with Emrakul Reanimator is Emrakul's ability is a cast ability. So you can reanimate it as a 13-13 Flying Trampler, which is still not bad. Like, a 13-13 Flying Trampler is nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. However, wow. Why is no one playing Conduit of Worlds? Conduit of Worlds is seeming pretty awesome. Wait, how many, how many card, oh, do we get a count? One, two. Oh, we can't play another spell if we traverse. One, two, three, so I guess we're not doing that. Okay, so new plan. Conduit of Worlds for Tyvar. Tyvar, cast it. Conduit of Worlds is straight up winning us this game. This was looking very grim, but Conduit is just straight up winning us this game. Get back scavenging ooze, ooze. Eat your cling to dust, which has been an annoying. And, hmm. Oh yeah, we can't cast a spell. All right, pass the turn. All right, you're go about it. Yeah, at some point we can traverse. The problem is if we cast traverse off of conduit, if we cast Traverse off of Conduit, we can't also cast Emrakul, because Conduit only lets us... That's our only spell to turn. If we use Conduit to cast a spell, that's it. That's it, that's all. About it. Taking down. Oh, they don't even have anything worth eating. Uh, sure, Meowth Massacre. Conduit of Worlds is choose target non-land permanent, yeah. So you get to play a land for free. And then you can cast a non... Oh, yeah, so we couldn't cast Traverse anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About it. Going to combat. Getting it. Hitting us. I mean, sooner or later, we're going to find Emrakul. Tyver. The funny thing is, we can keep casting the same spell. There's no, there's no clause on this that's like, you can't... You can't cast the same spell over and over again. So that's kind of the issue that our opponents are running into. They keep killing the same Tyver, but the same Tyver keeps doing the same thing. Uh, Castle Agway returns. I mean, I guess we just cast Tyver. Conduit of Worlds has been very... Oh, wait. There's Vessel of Nascency. That might be even better. We really just want the Emrakul. If we ever find the Emrakul... I guess it's not even that insane here, is it? <laughs> If we ever find the Emrakul, it doesn't actually do that much. Our opponent's empty-handed. Hmm. I actually don't know what we're supposed to play here. El Conduit. Man, let's take Vessel. Cast Vessel. Pass the turn. Oh, but it adapts. Ah, we've been we've been uh, teaching the zoomers about Emmer. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that was the top deck of the century. Sure. Go blank. That was a that was a good one for our opponent. Well, our graveyard has emptied. Opponent takes up the Liliana. I mean, thankfully we got ve thankfully we got Vessel to fill the graveyard again. Opponent's gonna go after our Castle Lockwain. I'll draw a card. <laughs> this kind of what a world is straight up winning the game. The deckless thing is outdated. Really. What deck list? What deck list is it showing? Um, hmm. Well, take a castle Ogwin. With the conduit out, this land destruction plan for our opponent just isn't doing much. Uh, castle. Actually, castle Ogwin from hands better. All right, pass the turn. <laughs> Nothing. Sooner or later, Emrakul's. Actually, we can cast the vessel again. 
Yeah, Vessel and Agency, again. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. We're going to find the Emrakul. The problem is they got this Liliana, but then if they kill the Emrakul, we just get to keep casting it. Oh, that's what our opponent's doing. Hey, so I saw your elf ball on YouTube. Got a question. Why Tyver over Tamio in the main deck? I think the three extra life as well as an option to target not any permanent is way more valuable than the stat boost. Wait, what are we talking about? Tyver over... We might be thinking about different decks. I don't think... The Alpha deck I played was had Nissa in it. I don't think... Oh, you're talking... Not Planeswalkers. You're talking about the protection spells. I see. Well, we finally get to kill this very annoying Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Thank goodness. That card was so obnoxious. Um... I, I think the pump, ooh, Ishkana. I think the pumping's more relevant. So, so I think the pumping, I would say that I think the pumping is, is enough of an upside to make it worth it. Instant sorcery, enchantment land. So Ishkana's on. Well, replay gets a lock win. Ishkana. Spider time. <laughs> Spider time. Virus beetle. Virus beetle. Pass the turn. And Ishkana's going to steal this. Ishkana's going to steal this. The forgotten card. How many Emrakuls in this deck? Uh, so there's two actual Emrakuls. And then four Traverse the Uvenwalds to tutor up Emrakul. So yeah, all of our Emrakuls being in the bottom 20... Man, opponent scoops it up. All the Emrakuls being at the bottom uh, 20 cards is actually awkward. Ah, uh, we're currently playing Explorer. This is... This is Explorer. We are exploring Explorer. Hey, Seth, have you ever thought about making a Mishra Eminent One EDH deck? Works wonders with Panormonicon, and with the amount of artifacts with ETB triggers, I have one that destroys full pots with cards like Mindslaver and Portal to Phyrexia. Yeah, Mishra looks really sweet. I've seen, yeah, kind of what a Worlds is. I think it might be a bit of a sleeper. Like, that straight up won us that game. <laughs> like, we were so, had no business being in that game. No business whatsoever. And that was just purely, that was just purely the power of Conduit of Worlds. Like, straight up Conduit of Worlds sealing that win. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst can get rid of Liliana, which is something. So, opponent's playing Waste Knot. Waste Knot's another deck that actually got better because, because of Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Gaia Reach Sanitarium... Uh, being able to force your opponent to draw and discard is huge with Waste Knot. Yeah, it's like, you gotta be in green, but it's only one more mana compared to... It's only one more mana compared to Crucible of Worlds, and being able to cast spells sometimes is really nice. Yeah, that was a grind. I mean, this is a pretty grindy game if it works. Uh, well, I like this hand. We don't have a way to deal with a quick waste knot, unfortunately. We know our opponent has a ton of discard, but excited for BFZ Remaster to hopefully give me Ulamag's Nullifier so I can make the evil Esper Flicker counter deck. Yeah, that, that was one of the sweeter, sweeter Devoid cards for sure. Um, hmm. Well, play the land. I think we just traverse for a land. Traverse Uvenwald's a pretty good card in the right deck. About it. Schwamp and Waste Knot. I mean, I assume if you're playing Waste Knot, I'm pretty sure you just have to super aggressively mulligan for Waste Knot. <laughs> because it's kind of the Heartless Summoning uh, concern where if you build around it and you don't draw it, your deck doesn't really do what you need it to do. Opponent going to go blank. 
Well, discard scavenging ooze. And discard. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's kinda. So opponent makes some zombies with their waste knot. Well, play the land and pass the turn. We're getting closer ever so slowly towards eventually having full pioneer. Opponent. I mean, waste knot decks are fun. There's just not not a backup. Not a backup for the waste knot. What do you got about it? Looking very much at our Shigigi. Goes to combat. Attacks. Yup. Okay, well, we will Shigiki. Pick it up. Get a Blooming Marsh. Mill some cards. Down to 16. And what? Opponent passes. Huh. Huh, 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 huh. Well, Seder Wayfinder. Go dig it. Do you feel like Remastered Sets are going to ramp up, or is there another card that can clog that? I mean, ooh, that's actually kind of huge here. Take a besage you. Play the land. Oh yeah, that's that's super huge. So we get rid of this silly waste knot. Um, crack fabled passage. Uh, hopefully the remastered sets. I hope they ramp up. Like we're getting close. We're getting close to actually having full pioneer. Um, and the master sets continuing and ramping up is the best way for us to get there. So I am hopeful that it actually ramps up. Yeah, we talked about the, the Mark Rosewater mom hints, uh, more towards the beginning of the stream. I'm so hyped for that set. March of the Machines looks so incredibly amazing. I am like over the top set. Really? They said this was the last master set planned? I hope they didn't say that. How are they ever going to... How are they going to get the rest of the Pioneer cards on uh, on the client? That would be a very confusing choice. Do you think that Pioneer being fully on Arena would kill Historic? I don't think so. I think the formats do separate things. Although, as we've seen, like every outer metric we have shows that... Historic has sadly really dropped in popularity, which is a bummer because it's such a cool format. Um, I think the thing that is killing Historic is is the alchemy cards. Like, I, I think that's the issue. I think Wizards made a bad decision, and they're they're gonna go down with the ship. Like, they made a they made a bad decision, and they're sticking with it. Historic is more popular than Explorer. Yeah. So, one thing. Uh, oh, I wish. I wonder if I can find this chart. Um. So where is the? Oh, here. I think this might be it. So that chart, the chart that people always bring up, uh, it's so deceptive. My that's my opinion. My opinion is it's so deceptive. Um huh. Do we Shigiki? How do we do this? Boy, we mostly got a bunch of lands in the graveyard. Um Arishkana's gone. Now let's play okay, let's Shigiki. We're gonna get we're gonna try to get to Emergle. That was the that was the goal. Shigiki gets us a forest. We mill some cards. Tyvar. Take down Tyvar. Hold your 
Okay. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Take down Tyvar. We will take a Tangle Floral Hedron. Traverse the Uvenwald. We're going for it. We are going for it. Emrakul, the promised end for next turn at seven mana. Pass the turn opponent. Do your worst. Draw your graveyard hater something because mama is coming. Has a lock weight opponent. Draws a card down to 18. And. <clears throat> so. So the chart. The chart that people always point to, the chart that pe that Wizard showed in the stream, about the format popularity, this is the one that people people always come back to, that shows Explore down here, then Alchemy conveniently slightly out of it, and then Historic up here, and then Standard up here. So, the thing about this chart... <laughs> yeah, spoiler season for Mom is next week, uh, v -Housen. and then uh, And then there's like a week, and then the set releases. So the... the th Ooh, Liliana, eh? You're telling me what you know. I mean, that doesn't matter, because Emrakul is coming. Pwnit ticking up. Don't we'll discard uh, Shieldred. Opponent discards a land. Opponent goes attacking. We will drop to eight. That is fine. Well, uh, Emrakul, steal your turn. Scoops it up. Wow. Emrakul busted. Emrakul is busted. Um, every every build we played. This was a build I was most skeptical of. Every build we played performed well. Uh, we ranked up across the board. Every every deck that we played actually was like super, super functional. So we played... I know there's no animate. There's no animation. There's no anim you you will be it literally just Emrakul comes down and then when it goes to your opponent's turn, you get to see their hand. Like that's it. There's literally no animation, nothing different or exciting, but it does it does actually work. It does work, which is very impressive considering how they thought it wasn't going to work. Uh so we started with Mono White Devotion. Mono White Devotion Emrakul kind of crushed it the deck's actually i love this deck like you get to play a bunch of new cards you get thalia's lancers to tutor all the pieces up you get to play elish norn i just really enjoy playing this deck so i would definitely recommend it it is expensive because it's a yarian deck but that is one of my it's just like a super fun deck to play i love the play style of mono white devotion i love the new additions i love elish norn i love emmer close the finisher so that worked really well we played etherworks marvel which is like the all-in combo build we were just like bad energy starts bad energy cards boom emmerkel get ya yes there's inconsistencies sometimes you don't hit a marvel sometimes you whiff with marvel and it's bad but the power level is really high this deck has the upside of just oops i accidentally won the game on turn four and then we play golgari which was honestly the build i was most skeptical of and we only played a couple matches so small sample size all that but conduit of worlds was an all-star you just kind of do golgari mid-rangey stuff and then eventually you find the emerald and close out the game i will say conduit really impressed me to the point where we probably need to build more around this card that card was the kind of the sneaky the sneaky all-star in this deck but i think i and i would love to hear what y'all think but i came away from this feeling like emrakul is like really good in explorer hey what's up notion rain oh, i should be doing my homework but magic is bored for it oh well good news notion rain is uh <clears throat> we're right at the end of the stream we will be rating someone we'll be we'll be rating someone but we are right at the right at the very end of the stream is there a deck list for mono yeah i can add the so the deck list in the chat right now is golgari um the i will add the other two and if you missed anything you can always you can always find the old streams on the replay YouTube. It'll be up tomorrow. So this is the this is the Marvel deck, if you're looking for that one. And then this is the Mono White Devotion deck. The Cardboard Samurai. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, everyone, whew, that brings us to the end of our stream for today. The good news is I'm, I'm pretty sure Jim Davis is checking out some new brews with the new cards as well. So let's let's give Jim a raid, see what he's working on. And we will be back on Tuesday 
to uh or no thursday assuming my cold doesn't keep getting worse yeah we're, we're gonna rate jim i think he's checking out new stuff in uh with the new cards from shadows over in his trout remaster too so um we'll be back on thursday assuming i don't get sicker to check out some more of the new cards uh reminders real quick replay youtube normal youtube tomorrow's against the odds is pretty sweet one more reminder that our sponsor is card kingdom if you need some magic cards you get them at cardkingdom.com most importantly thank you to all of you I know there's like a ton of stuff going on. You could be doing anything this Tuesday afternoon, but you hung out to play some Amrical to teach some arena zoomers about uh about what it's like to lose their turn. Oh, we'll talk about remind me next stream to uh to talk about the graph. Uh we'll we'll get into it in the next stream because it's kind of a big topic. But anyway, everyone, I love y'all. You're amazing and awesome. Have a great day, have a great night. I'll see you on Thursday as long as I don't get sicker. Until then, have a good one, everyone. We attack here. I'm just gonna attack. 